for that you're that side. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir. I also want to join the rest of the country in mourning the loss, tragic loss of a very distinguished son of our country that served his nation with his all. My deepest condolences to the president, who is commander in chief, and the UPDF community. Mr. Speaker, sir, you have talked about two concepts. First concept, effectiveness. Second concept, efficiency. Mr. Speaker, sir, effectiveness means, as you're fully aware, doing the right thing. And ephesians means doing the right thing right. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm happy about the turn up of cabinet, but this is parliament. Constitutionally, Mr. Speaker, sir, your word is final. And nobody in this house, including the front benches, have capacity and capability to question. Yesterday, we're struggling with a situation where, Mr. Speaker, sir, May 12th, in that seat, you presided over and directed the minister for finance. I remember that day, Mr. Speaker, sir, the prime minister was in the house, the minister for finance was in the house, and all you said was, can you give a government a commitment? And I'm happy that the Minister for Finance made a, a commitment, and also the Prime Minister made the same commitment. If the front, the front benchers or members of the cabinet took your words seriously, would have saved time for this nation. Because all we needed was an extract of the answer. Speaker asking or directing the Hansard Department to extract the minute, and then a letter as directed by Speaker is written by Minister for Finance to fund the Nasser operators. So Mr. Speaker, sir, the communication that I wanted to make is that we need to ensure that we save time for government and time for a presiding officer. That the moment the speaker directs, it is, cons it is a constitutional mandate for the members of uh, cabinet to act. Because Thank the more Thank you, we Honorable continue Lee. talking, the less people remember what we talked. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Korik. Um, Honorable Minister of Works on 13th of July, the member of parliament, woman member of parliament for Koima City, Honorable Nakato, Nakato, tabled a petition to do with the compensation of Hoima Kai Sotonya Road, which road was done a long time ago. Before I even came to parliament, now I have gray hair. And people are not yet compensated. And you promised to respond and act within two weeks' time. And it has not been done. So on Wednesday next week, I need you to come on the floor and you respond to the petition. Matters of national importance, when I were even in Chemtai. Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. I also join you on behalf of uh, the people of Sabisa region to condole with the family and this nation for the loss of our honorable colleague, the general. Uh, the matter of importance that I want to bring, honorable uh, speaker, is the continuous killings of uh, young men who are border, border riders in Bukwa district. Bukwa being a border district, most of uh, the business is done between Kenya and Uganda. And so far, we've lost so many young men 
who are killed by customers or people who tend to be ridden on the Kenyan side. As we speak now, we have a body that's supposed to be buried tomorrow for one called uh, Ellie. Last month, we lost one called Kisa Bryan. And there's another one called Oscar Kipto who disappeared to date. We've never found the body. These customers pick borders from the Ugandan side, cross to Kenya, and there is, a, uh, there is a forest where they kill the boys and they take uh, the, the motorbikes. Prayers? My prayers is to the, uh, gen, uh, the, 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 the Minister of Security and maybe Internal Affairs. Please, we pray that you take it up. It's really escalating and becoming very dangerous. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Minister for Security. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, I thank the Honorable Member for that information. We had received the same and uh, investigations are going on and we are going to make sure that that stops forthwith. And uh, the culprits will be followed, whether they are in Uganda or in Kenya, they will be brought to book. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Feta. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I wish to join in condoling with you the passing of a very courageous gentleman, an exceedingly professional soldier, General Tumine. May his soul rest in peace. The matter of national importance I am raising concerns the washing away of a very key bridge on the River Nyao. River Nyao is the key source of national water and sewage cooperation for supply of clean water in Arua City. But also the bridge which has been washed away plays a key role in trade. The people of that city are fed mainly from Vura. Vura is the food basket. That's Arua district. So the food is taken through that road to Arua city, but because of the floods now, the, 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 the traders cannot access Arua city, and Pray. residents cannot access Arua city. Prayers, honorable. My prayers, number one, is to the Minister of Works to temporarily restore that bridge so that people can be able to access it. But the second prayer is to Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development because the reports indicate that that bridge is under procurement but the, 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 the processes with which the other bridges started have been completed but the bridge in question is still under procurement. So I want to appeal to the ministry to fast track the process so that the proper and permanent construction can be done. I thank, thank you. Thank you. Minister for Works. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I'm happy that the Honorable Member has said temporarily that the Ministry of Works makes sure we meet and he saw people accessing other places that bridge. We are going to work on it immediately. After here, we we'll got in touch with him. We temporarily work for people to pass through. Then later, we look for funds to permanently work on that bridge. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Pass Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My name is Zimbabwe Pasika. I represent Wekula County from Wende District. Right Honorable Speaker. I rise on the matter of national importance regarding gold mining in my constituency. Gold mining was started in my constituency, particularly in Chitanda, LOC1, Makukul Parish, Chiruma Sub County. However, because of using rudimentary technologies as a leader, I mean, I fear that lives might be lost due to these heavy rains that have started. The miners have dug deep pits where they walk long distances under the ground and when you reach there physically, cracks have started to develop 
so far three people have died since the mining activities started. Right Honorable Speaker, it's my player that let the ministry that lies in that line goes there and regulates the mining activities before all people perish there. More so, the available water sources that have been providing water for my people have already been destroyed. Now, my people are depending on running waters full of dust and silt that escalate from the refining of gold. Right, Honorable Speaker, I'm in fear that any time a lot of diseases are going to develop there and attack my people because of using dirty and unsafe water. My player there, let the government swiftly go there and at least fix some water sources so that my people can have a better living. Thank I beg you. to submit. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, Minister, uh, you want to give him water? Very good. Honorable Pasco, your issues are settled. Now that the Minister of Water, they need water too. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I sympathize with the Honorable M M M Babazi, not a man. Uh, and the people he represents. Water, indeed, colleagues, is life. And yet, um, the, pro the problem he's uh, presenting is actually not even unique to his area alone. On our part as a ministry, um, we need to ensure that the water sources are safe for our people. He has made a prayer in this parliament, and uh, we need to act on that. Meanwhile, to have it comprehensively done, we need to link up with the Ministry of Energy so that we get to the root cause and solution to the whole problem. So I undertake on, our, on the ministry that we link up my, with my friend, Honorable Mbawazi, so that at least we, we give them some source of water. Meanwhile, we shall have an investigation also done to ensure that the continuous activities should not terminate the source of life, which is water. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable uh, Kwago. Thank you, Honorable, right Honorable Speaker. I too condone with the nation over the loss of Jenu Eddy. I raise on a matter of uh, uh, urgent importance regarding Chotera District Referral Hospital. This hospital serves over 500,000 people, not only limited to Chotera, but parts of uh, Raka, Iruengo, even Masaka. It doesn't have a functional X-ray. The existing X-ray uh, expired its useful life in 2019. And this was duly communicated by uh, the, 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 service, uh, the supplier. Uh, the technical team communicated that. So it's not been in use. Right Honorable Speaker, patients who require these services are directed to go to Masaka Regional Referral Hospital or private uh, health facilities in Masaka. The way uh, Masaka, Masaka Mutukula Road, how it is today, it's very, very terrible for patients to move that long distance. Second, the Right Honorable Speaker, Chotela District Referral Hospital has not had medicine, not even a panado, for the last three weeks, even as we speak now. We as area member of parliament, parliament uh, uh, coming from Jotera district, we have patients lining up at our area offices seeking for support. We keep giving them money to go to private pharmacies for this. So my prayers are, one, for Minister of Health to really remedy the issue of uh, uh, the X-ray at the, at the Chotera district fire hospital, which is Kalisi's hospital, and two, to have an immediate solution for the drug, the drug, the issue of drugs in the hospital. I beg to submit. Thank you. Government Chief Whip. All right, Honorable Speaker. First of all, I give notice that the ministers from the Ministry of Health informed us in writing they wrote to you notifying Parliament about their absence 
because of other state duties within and without Uganda. Secondly, I undertake to inform the Ministry of Health about the issues raised by the Honorable Member from Chotera that will require their response within two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, uh, Honorable Chief Whip, like on the issue of medicine, national medical stores should, should intervene. I tried to call the general manager. I couldn't get him today because I was concerned. The colleague saying for, for three weeks they don't have medicine and now it's a member of parliament purchasing medicine, purchasing drugs, you know. So that one I request you intervene right away. You call the general manager NMS. They deliver the necessary... Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, what I know is that national medical stores, when they deliver assortments of medicines, they normally send messages. For instance, for a Leptong district as a member of parliament, I normally receive their messages when they deliver. I now request you, you Right Honorable Speaker, that um, before the end of uh, today's sitting, I will move out with this member and try to find out directly from national medical stores on what is happening on supplies to Chotera. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Honorable Chief Whip. Honorable Lili Anabe. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I condone with the family of uh, late General Eli Tumine, and I pray that his soul rests in internal peace. Right Honorable Speaker, I rise under Rule 64 of the Rules of Procedure to raise a matter of national but urgent importance. Right Honorable Speaker, there are government schools and institutions which have been constructed and others are still underway, but those which are already completed and not yet being utilized is causing a lot of challenges and wastes of government resources. Right Honorable Speaker, there is a school in Kidgum District, a technical school, Pajong Technical School in Muchwini Sub-County, Kidgum District, which has been under construction since 2002. Right Honorable Speaker, this school was constructed in memory of the 56 people who were massacred by the LRA and buried in a mass grave. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, made a pledge that the school be constructed. And indeed, the construction was done. But since then, the school is not yet functioning. And the locals are faced with a challenge to continue doing the bush clearing in the school and it's a big problem. One day the school will be da burned down and then therefore the rationale of having the school constructed wouldn't have been met. I therefore raise my prayers, right honorable speaker, that the ministry pays a visit to the school and uh, ascertain why the school is not yet functioning. Two, the project to be reembarked on and we do the equipping of these institutions so that we can help in skills training of our children. Government to recruit and deploy instructors in the institution so that they can open in the next financial year. To also the institution to be reopened immediately for the next financial year, next academic year. The earlier plan for direct road leading to their school be opened immediately. Electricity and pipe water be installed, right honorable speaker. Another school called Panduong Seed School, right honorable speaker, but was also colleague. budgeted. Colleague, and please, we have two minutes for, so let's take one. When the minister is coming, we'll come with you, then you will address the rest to, to the minister. So, honorable minister. Much obliged. Thank you. Right Honorable Speaker, first of all, I would like to begin by thanking my sister, Honorable Lilian Abe, for raising issues concerning the sector where I am in now. For those who don't know me, <laughs> I am Peter Guang. 
I am the new Minister of State for Education and Sports. And Sports. I'm here to represent my boss, the Minister Mama, the First Lady. And for the record today, and for the record today, according to the rota which is in my ministry, now my brother, no, Honorable on, Semujo. On, on our, Honorable colleague, it's a maiden speech. So, <laughs> so a, a member is protected. <laughs> Let him finish. <laughs> A right Honourable Speaker, Honourable Semuji is a personal friend. I've been here with him for some time. So, Honourable Semuju, as of every Thursday, I am the one who will be representing the Minister of Education and Sports. And for that matter, for the specific issue which has been asked, I want to implore my sister. I'm going to follow up the matter. I will work with you, even move with you up to that school, and then we shall come and give the answer together to the August House. Thank you. I thank you so, so much. So, Honorable thank Peter, you. congratulations, and we know you for that. So, we know once you promise, that's uh, delivered. Uh, Honorable colleagues, some of you sending me matters of national importance here, please, if you have a matter of national importance, a matter of urgency, come to my office. I don't receive them from here. Honorable Juliet Bashisha. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I also stand with the people of Mitoma District Kondor, with the family of the late El Tomuine, and may his soul rest in peace. Right Honorable Speaker and my colleagues, I'm raising on a matter of national importance about the welfare of soldiers who were arrested on a mission in Somalia and convicted, and one of my own was sentenced to death. I'm not raising to contest, to contest the decision, the court decision, I'm not contesting it, but I'm concerned about the welfare of his family. On 10th August 2021, a one captain, Asimwe Charles, who is from my constituents, was commanding a group of soldiers in Somalia, and he faced occupational challenges that made him be convicted to death. The family is in, is in challenges because they have tried to access the funds from Wazarendo and uh, people in, in charge are telling them that when someone is convicted to death, he is not supposed to access anything. They have been on my neck, remember, for them they think that a, a member of parliament can solve everything, including a capital punishment nature. My prayer, right honorable speaker, is that this family be allowed at least to access the fund this soldier worked for in Somalia and even other soldiers. This man has a family of five people, of five children, and one known woman or wife. Known, yes, because he may be having others. He has very aged parents who are already psychologically tortured because they know the fate of their son. Another prayer is, uh, uh, unfortunately, my colleagues, the members of UPDF are not here and for the known. Uh, I, one, yes, I said ma the majority are not here. D Dr. Nekesa will... Uh... I, I, I request that if you don't have a department that prepare these people for whatever circumstances, especially if the person is convicted and is going to be sentenced to death, you should create it so that they prepare the family for whatever repercussions that are going to befall the family. Thank they you. are now coming to me. Next, they will come to you, right, Honorable Speaker. 
but I request that at least let the family be prepared for whatever challenges their son would. Thank you. Um, I will request General Mohose to, to be the one to answer this. Since he was a CDF and he knows operations of Wazarendo very well, though he's not a Minister for Defense, but he's still a general, he can help us with useful information. Thank you, Honorable. Right, Honorable Speaker. I note the concern of the Member of Parliament. Wazalendo money is out of members' contributions. So that statement of saying they can't access it, I think is wrong. I'll contact the leadership of Wazalendo and the Minister of Defense to ensure that the family accesses that money. Thank you. Thank you, General. And also, um, the UPDF fraternity in the house, you know, uh, the CDF sits in this house. So CDF help a member because the family, I know how they have been pushing the Honorable Juliet so much. Honorable Katenya, Isaac? Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I stand here to present uh, uh, a matter of national importance. In the Ugisam region, especially Aragon, we have just been uh, facing disasters of landslides and, uh, and uh, floods. Now, these two issues devastated a lot of uh, roads. They devastated the water sources. They devastated the uh, uh, bridges. So as I talk now, in my constituency, six bridges have broken down. So far, three people have died from those bridges. And then the six roads, which are stretches between 22 kilometers and uh, 12 kilometers, have been uh, completely destroyed and washed away. So I actually wanted to request the Minister of Works to immediately come and restore these roads and then the Minister of Water try to come and uh, disinfect the water sources which have been contaminated and then at least uh, dig some trenches in areas which have been flooded, which, have been which are having stagnated water and then the bridges which have been broken at least uh, to be repaired so that my people can be rescued. And this is something which is very urgent and it needs an urgent uh, attention so that uh, we save the lives of our people who have been dying. I'm Katenya Isaac, Member of Parliament for Ambuli Constituency. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Minister of Works. Minister of Works. He has left. Okay, Minister for Water. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I do hear my brother, Honorable Isaac. And uh, Right Honorable Speaker, we have just been from a meeting in the office of the Prime Minister with my brother. And uh, there are already strategies which were plotted, which we agreed that we are going to work on, especially on the issue of water. We have also agreed, my brother, from the meeting with the Prime Minister, which is even he is coming to brief Parliament on some of these undertakings. And uh, the bridges was also agreed that it will be incorporated in what we are going to undertake. I, I pray that, that we, 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 we address that issue comprehensively as we are handling the Elgon region as an intervention, as we had agreed in the meeting with the Prime Minister. Thank you. Next item. Item number three on the order paper, designation of members to committees. I start with the government chief whip. Yeah. Uh, Government Chief Whip, read all your members for all committees you have. He also does, and we finish. But we don't take a look. And uh, Dean of Independence.
Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, in accordance to Rule 1510C, 158-10-162 and 165 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I designate the following honorable members to the Committee on Science, Technology, and Innovation. Honorable Achia Remedio, Chairperson. Honorable Asimwe Florence Akiki, Deputy Chairperson. The members are Honorable Okot Boniface Henry, Honorable Alex Neon Shaba, Honorable Kia Joan Aniko, Honorable Moesi Jennifer Abaho, Honorable Koremoe Janet, Honorable Chinobere Abbott, Honorable Leko Joel, Honorable Kinshaba Patience Nkunda, Honorable Award Betty Engola, Honorable Chibaju Naume, Honorable Bingi Patrick Nyanzi, Honorable Mbayo Esther, Honorable Aheko Patrick, Honorable Arinaitre Rakajara, Honorable Kube Kubeketeria James, Honorable Mavenjina Catherine Akumu, Honorable Nafuna Muloni Irene Margaret, Honorable Najuma Sara, Honorable Mugumia Claire, Honorable Ndezi Alex, Honorable Odoi Bernard Onen, and Honorable Okulu Anthony Aboka Jalon. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to designate. Secondly, Right Honorable Speaker, in accordance with Rule 1510C, Rule 187, Rule 188, 2, and 1885 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I designate the following Honorable Members of Parliament to the sectoral committees as follows. Honorable Tembo Gideon Mujungu to the Committee on Physical Infrastructure, Honorable Sechikubo Theodore to the Committee on Defense and Internal Affairs, Honorable Nebanda Andiro Florence, to the Committee on Health, Honorable Agnes Achibu, to the Committee on Education and Sports. I beg to designate. Thirdly, Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, in accordance to Rule 1510C, 158-10, 158.1, Roman number 1, 158.1e, 162, 165 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I designate the following honorable members to the following standing committees. Honorable Tembo Gideon Mujungu, Committee on Equal Opportunity. Honorable Kambale Ferigo to the Committee of Public Accounts, Kosase. Honorable Ojok Andrew Olanya to the Committee on National Economy. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I beg to designate. Thank you, Government Chief Whip, Opposition Chief Whip. Uh, right Honorable Speaker. In accordance with the Rule 160, Sub Rule 2 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I hereby designate the following opposition members to the new Standing Committee of Science, Technology, and Innovation. The Honorable Lutaya Joffre of Kakuto. The Honorable Serugenya David of Maki Indiasava Gabo. The Honorable Sekavira Dennis 
of Katikamu South. The Honorable Kagabo Twaha Muse of Bukoto. Those are all from NUP, National Unity Platform. Then the Honorable Awal Betty Ochan, Guru City, Guru City, FDC. The Honorable Sasaga Isaiah, Vodadili East, FDC. The Honorable Okot Santa, Aru North, Aru North PPP. And the Honorable Alum Sanda Santra Oyam of UPC. I beg to designate a right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Yeah. The Honorable Sekavira Dennis of Katikamu South. Or oh, North. Yeah, of Katikamu. I am making a correction, Mr. Speaker. Of Katikamu North National Unity Platform. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. In accordance with the Rule 188, Sub Rule 5 of the Rules of Procedure Parliament of Uganda, I hereby designate the opposition members to the sectoral committees as follows. The Honorable Nachi Helen of Karung West, ah, of Karangara. The Honorable Nachimuli Helen of Kalangara, National Unity Platform, on the Committee of Agriculture. The Honorable Kirumira Hassan of Katikamu South, National Unity Platform, on the Committee of Tourism, Trade, and Industry. The Honorable Isavire Aga of Jinja North of FDC, on the Committee of Tourism, trade and industry, and the Honorable Serugenya David of Mark India Savagabo on the Sectoral Committee of Information, Communication, and Technology. I beg to designate Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, uh, Chief Whip. Uh, Honorable John. There is for independence. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Pursuant to Rule uh, 160, Sub Rule 2 of the Rules of Procedure, I would like to redesignate the following members uh, to the Committee of Science, Technology, and Innovation the Honorable Katenya Isaac of Wilamburi County, in, an independent. The Honorable Ogwari Polycap of Agule County, Independent. The Honorable Wamala Florence Nambozo of Sironko. Procedure. Mr. Speaker, political parties and our rules designate and uh, whips. Independence are designated by the speaker. They cannot be designated by one of them. That will be another parliament, not in this one. So the procedure issue I am raising is whether this member is proceeding well by usurping the powers of the speaker and, uh, and appoint himself a speaker and he begins designating people as though he was a speaker of parliament. Thank you. N now I've known that uh, with Honor Ewosemujin, the house, my seat is safe. He can't allow a coup. <laughs> no, but I'm the one who told Honor Ewo, uh, Zijan to designate on my behalf. So, Honor Ewo, please. Thank you, Right Honorable, <laughs> for your protection <laughs> against uh, the colleague. <laughs> <laughs> right Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Rule 188, Sub Rule 5 of our rules, I wish to designate the following members uh, to the Committee on Education and Sports. Honorable Katenya Isaac of Lamburi County, 
to the Committee on uh, Education and Sports, the Honorable Wamala Nambozo Florence of Sironko Education and Sports. Pursuant to the same rules, right Honorable Speaker, I wish to designate the following Honorable Members to the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. The Honorable Ogwari Polycap of Agli County Independent. I beg to submit, right Honorable Speaker, to, to designate. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Zijan. Um, Government Chief Whip, we need the list of the ministers, the schedule. You have it ready? Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, following your guidance during the 20th sitting of the first meeting of the second session of the 11th Parliament of Uganda, held on Thursday, 18th August 2022, and in accordance with Rule 15.2 and Rule 15.10b of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, and in further reference to a letter dated 7th July 2022 by the Right Honorable Prime Minister to all ministers in regard to the same, and my subsequent communication in Parliament and Cabinet. I hereby lay on table a weekly schedule of ministers' attendance at the sitting of the House. Ministry by ministry, I beg to lay. Thank you, Government Chief Whip. Um, this list should be uploaded on our Alfresco system for all members to access, especially the non compliant. Yes, so that we know those who have defied the Prime Minister, you know. And um, colleagues, this list will help you uh, before sometimes coming on the floor. You know, today I'm going to be interfacing uh, with the Honorable so and so. But that does not mean, Honorable Ministers, that that day when you're not uh, gazetted to be here, that you don't attend. No, you're a member of parliament. You're a member of parliament. So any time as a minister, as a member of parliament, you can always be in this house. So I would be really happy if most of you continue coming. Our colleagues, in the public gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation from the leadership of the Democratic Party. They have come to observe proceedings of the House. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, also in the VIP gallery this afternoon, we have Honorable Henry Bazira Sewanyana, former member who represented Massacre Southwest in the fourth parliament and current leader in the Democratic Party. Mm. He has come to observe proceedings of this house. Thank you. You are always welcome, Honorable. Yeah. Honorable Minister of Trade. I had allowed you statement by Minister on adulterated genes. This should take us around five minutes, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And the statement has been uploaded on our, on our system. But first, right honorable speaker, I join the rest of the country in registering my sympathies to the family of this courageous Ugandan soldier who sacrificed so much for Uganda's stability, security, and freedom, uh, the honorable general Eric Mwine. Right honorable speaker, on Tuesday, we informed the House that UNBS enforcement team traveled to Arua City on the, to establish the circumstances under which the 17 people were, who consumed local genes, known as City 5, died and others taken ill after the consumption. We once again extend 
our heartfelt condolences to the families who have lost uh, their dear ones. So the Bureau went and picked samples and uh, also when they arrived, the Ugandan police force had already apprehended four suspects and taken them into custody at Arua Central Police Station. The suspects included the manufacturers and the person who was selling the city five gene, in particular, in a particular kiosk. The Ugandan police had also picked the sample of the packed bottles of five, of city five gene from a kiosk where uh, most of the victims had purchased it. Uh, this led them to the factory uh, where the gene was being uh, produced at a place uh, called Pajulo, and the manufacturer uh, was trading under the name Ruruli Fruit Wine. Mr. Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, the Bureau noted that it had certified Ruruli Fruit Wine to produce same sweet steel table pineapple wine. And after, after undergoing conformity assessment, and the same factory had attempted to apply for a certification of CT5 pineapple uh, flavored gene, which failed the laboratory analysis for having low alcohol content, which was below 37.5%. Therefore, the CT5 gene had not yet been satisfied by UNBS for conformity to the relevant standards and should have not been in production and for sale for the public. Uh, the Bureau, together with Uganda Police, inspected Ruruli Fruit Wine Factory and 40, found 40 unmasked drums containing alcohol and eight fuel jerricans containing alcohol. Eight samples were therefore picked from this laboratory for analysis at the Uganda Bureau of Standards. The results of the laboratory, Mr. Speaker, are as follows. The sample picked by Uganda police from the kiosk where the product was being sold was found to have been adulterated with excessive levels of methanol above the maximum limit of 50 milligrams per liter and had low levels of ethanol below 37.5% percent mass per volume specified as specified in the standards. Five samples out of eight picked from Ruruli fruit wine were found to have been also alterated with excessive levels of methanol, the maximum beyond the, uh, the, the maximum standard. One sample out of two picked from Detech Enterprises, which is a nearby uh, factory, was also found to be having excess levels of methanol max, uh, above the maximum limit of 50 milligrams per liter as specified in the standards. The conclusion of the analysis that based on the results of the laboratory, it is clear that the likely, the likely cause of death for the people who consumed the CT5 gene was due to excessive adulteration of the gene with methanol, which was found to be 17 to 16,183 times far more higher than the possible level of 500 milligrams, which is specified in the standard for gene. It is likely that uh, this was done deliberately, illegally. They used the methanol as a cheaper alternative to increase the potency of the CT5 gene instead of ethanol which is commonly used in making alcohol beverages. Unlike ethanol, methanol is poisonous for human consumption since it since can easily be absorbed through the eyes, skin, lungs, digestive system, which is its over uh, exposure causing death. Methanol is an industrial chemical which is mostly used to create fuel and solvent and freeze uh, for ethanol and, in, uh, uh, and other chemicals, plastics, polythenes, methanol also is commonly used for 
diluting, dissolving wall paints and wood vaccines. So it is a very dangerous uh, chemical uh, for this purpose. So what have been the actions taken uh, by the ministry uh, under the Bureau? The suspects involved in the manufacture of this CT5 have been arrested and in custody of Uganda Police Force. The Bureau has sealed off and suspended production facilities where this alternated gene was found until further notes. The Bureau has suspended the certification process of products from this particular facility. So they came for wine, but when they got a certification, they went and produced other things. The Bureau has also placed advertisements in local radios in West Nile region to caution people against consumption of CT5 gene and other unsatisfied beverages. So in case there are some who are already in the market, we are putting adverts for people to stop uh, drinking them. The Bureau will intensify the enforcement activities on the market against producers of unsatisfied alcohol beverages and other consumer products. The Bureau has already established regional offices in Iguru with fully fledged food safety testing laboratories to provide quality assurance and conformity assessment of all products manufactured and produced in Northern Uganda. Uh, the Bureau appeals uh, to those enterprises involved in production, manufacturing, processing, value adding activities to voluntarily <coughs> embrace application of quality standards uh, in their businesses. We are also appealing to the general public and local authorities to be vigilant and always to report anyone involved in the production and distribution of uncertified products uh, to the Bureau to take necessary action. We call upon Ugandans to join hands in promoting quality, a, a quality culture of consuming safe and quality products uh, which are satisfied by UNBS. We should avoid looking for cheaper and often harmful alternatives which are detrimental to our heresy and safety. And also we have put two marks on all of the products. We know some people attempt to forge them, but we think that with our two marks, uh, and that by now at least in every sub-county there, there is a smartphone, this can be traced if we use the local authorities. As guided by you, Mr. Speaker, and this House, the Interministerial Committee has been put in place to address the issue of advertisement of non-satisfied products by different media houses. So the Uganda Media Council will be soon be directed to stop all those media houses uh, which are advertising products like Mukama Nayamba without Without, <laughs> without being satisfied by UN. Mukama Nayamba, Mujakule, all those products, you know them. So we want to say if you are a media house, you are a media house, you are advertising a product, you have a responsibility to ask UNBS if that product is satisfied. Madam, Mr. Speaker, we will also work with the local authorities, including the village heresy teams at, the local, at LOC1, to increase the vigilance and awareness of the population of the dangerous products on the market. I beg uh, to lay the products, rather the, the results of, the, of our analysis, which are positive that the, the things that the chemical that killed the people, yes, it was through this gene 5 uh, alcohol, which should, should have never been on the market. I submit, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, thank you for reacting quickly and uh, taking action. I request you to keep in touch with the West Nile parliamentary group, uh, whose people have been mainly affected by all this so that we don't really uh, get such a cases again in the region. Colleagues, we no, we talked about this that time. Let's go to the next item. Thank you. Item number four. The you paper. can always access the minister.
is always available uh, to serve you. Item number four on the other paper, motion for adoption of the report of the Committee on Public Service and Local Government on the status of the implementation of the parish development model in the financial year 2021-2022. Honorable Nzima. You promised me that 30 minutes will be enough for two statements, so for two reports. So time yourself very well. At four, we have Prime Minister's time. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I want to take this chance to present Report on committee of, I mean, report of the Committee on Public Service and Local Government on the status of the implementation of the parish development model in the financial year 2021-2022. And uh, before I present, one observation I want to make here is that uh, this report was ready by last session, but we were not able to access space on the other paper but I'm going to present it the way it is. Uh, before I present it, I want to lay a copy of the report and also minutes of interaction with the various agencies. I beg to lay. Uh, right up, Speaker, I'm not going to read the whole report. Uh, the status of the implementation of Paris Development Model was laid by Honorable Minister Honorable Magjez Rafael, the Minister for Local Government and uh, the Minister for Local Government on the 7th of December 2011 and was referred to the Committee on Public Service and Local Government. In accordance with the Rule 159 and 185 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, the Committee on Public Service and Local Government examined the status of the implementation of the model in detail, made inquiries, and in accordance to Rule 159 and 189, hereby presents his report. Methodology, the committee held consultative meetings with and received submissions from the following stakeholders. The Minister of Local Government, Minister of Gender, Labor, and Social Development, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, Minister of ICT and National Guidance, Operation Wealth Creation, Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group, Action Against Hunger, Food Rights, reviewed the relevant literature, made references to relevant laws. Honorable Speaker, the rest of the details of the report is there. Let me go to our observations. Committee Observations and Recommendations, that's page 9. Right of Speaker, as I had said, by the time we compiled this report, there was no uh, Paris Development Model Policy Framework. So I'm going to read it the way we had presented. Currently, there is no clear policy that sets the overall tone of the implementation of PDM. Some of the closest policy frameworks on which the PDM is premised include the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, 1995, as amended under Article 179, subsection 2B, D, and E, and the Local Government Act, section 95, 96, and 97. Unfortunately, these are not sufficient in setting the basis for developing the guidelines, development of an action plan, and possibly the development of a clear and a realistic implementation roadmap for the PDM. The decentralization policy presented by the minister do not regulate certain pillars like financial inclusion, infrastructure, and mindset change under the model. The committee further observed that a clear policy framework for PDM will provide a vision, goals, and principles to guide actions and implementation. The policy framework would clearly spell out the roles and the responsibilities of each and every PDM 
the gov governing framework on PDM, the oversight function, monitoring and evaluation, and many others. Honorable Chair, it? can I allow you to remove your mask so that you okay. heard very well? Thank you. Yeah. Right of speaker number two is inherent inequalities in the allocation formula for PDM uh, funds. The committee observed that in financial year 2022-2023, Ceilings uh, 465.48 billion is earmarked for operationalization of the financial inclusion pillar. Uh, that was in the national budget framework paper of 2022-2023. However, the committee notes that the criteria for allocation of the funds is not based on equity and uh, may not be helpful to some parishes. Government is proposing to give Paris is the same amount of money, regardless of the variations in demographics and geographical size, inc uh, including unique needs of the various parishes and different poverty levels. The one size fits all criterion implies inherent inequality and unfairness. Committee recommendation. Committee recommends, therefore, there should be need to promote equity and the inclusive, in, in, inclusivity. Government needs a clear, equitable allocation formula for funds under the PDM that takes into consideration the different demographic, geographical, and socioeconomic dynamics. Number three, inadequate capacity and readiness for PDM implementation. The committee notes that, noted that in financial year 2021-2022, government allocated 200 billion for the recruitment of the Paris chiefs across the country, establishment of the Paris Development Model Secretariat, and development of PDM guidelines. The committee was informed that so far, 9,847 9, posts, that's 93 percent, have been filled according to the budget committee report on the national budget framework paper of 2022-2023. Despite this significant progress, the capacity of the policy chiefs, policy development committees, and the intended beneficiaries on the model have not been built. In addition, most policy chiefs do not have offices from which to operate. The committee further noted that the magnitude of the policy management functions, responsibilities, and the highest, I mean, higher expectation of the model which exerts a significant burden of expectation on the Paris chiefs. Committee recommendation. Capacity building program and the retooling for the Paris chiefs and the Paris development committees on the Paris development model should be prioritized as the other beacon of the model's success. B, in future, given the magnitude of the Paris management functions and the responsibility, government should consider upgrading the minimum qualifications for the position of the Paris chief to a level of degree holder. Number four, limited public awareness of the Paris development model among the citizens, policymakers, and the policy implementers. The committee was informed that the Paris development model is meant to improve the livelihoods of the ordinary citizens living in the subsistence economy. However, many of the citizens, stock beneficiaries, and policymakers are not fully aware about the concept and objectives of the model and their roles and that of other stakeholders in its successful implementation. The committee further noted that there is no clear relationship between the PDM, the sub-county, and the district. Yet inherent, uh, inherent functional synergies across the hierarchy of the local government is one of the pre uh, preconditions for successful implementation of the PDM. Committee recommendation A, government should invest in undertaking a well-coordinated citizens' awareness exercise and develop a clear dissemination roadmap of the PDM guidelines translated in the respective major local languages. The guidelines should be widely dis distributed by the Ministry of Local Government and other implementing ministries, departments, and agencies. B, for effective oversight for policy makers and policy implementers, it's very critical that any orientation is done on PDM. C, 
while this strategy of PDM is appreciated and encouraged for the purpose of socioeconomic transformation, there is a need for thorough explanation of the policy, legal, and institutional uh, framework to all stakeholders to enable successful implementation of the Model D. There is need to streamline and harmonize the policy and operational framework for the PDM for greater role clarity as a precondition for its success. Number five, biased and selective focus on pillar three, on financial inclusion at the expense of other pillars. A lot of effort is being put on the Paris Revolving Fund, which is the third pillar, financial inclusion, of the Paris Development Model. Yet, there are other pillars which are equally important for the success of the model. Interventions under third pillar are intended to promote savings and investment by households in activities with a potential for generating a product, production supplies. The specific interventions include establishment and the capitalization of the Paris Revolving Fund, that is A, B, supervision of Paris-based circles by Uganda Microfinance Regulatory Authority, C, capitalization of constituents-based circles under the Presidential Initiative for Wealth Creation and Jobs, Emioga, for households in the Nani subsistence economy. The committee noted that pillar number five on mindset change and cross-cutting issues, which will aid which will aid to prepare citizens and clarify upcoming concerns before funds are subversed into, into being given priority. The committee further observed that the Paris development model may suffer the same fate as planned for modernization of agriculture, where more emphasis were put on pillar two, that's NADS. Committee recommendation. Governments should equally focus on changing the mindset of the implement implementers of the PDM and the citizens while showing linkage of other pillars to each other to ensure complementarity. B, governments should equally prioritize other important pillars under the model. Number six, poor coordination and linkage bef between P ministries and other stakeholders. Improving coordination and the linkage among the various MDs and the stakeholders is critical in the success of Paris Development Model. The committee observed that currently there are numerous Paris Development Model implementation guidelines. For example, implementation guidelines from the Ministry of Local Government, that is Feb, Feb 2022, operational guidelines for financial inclusion, pillar by the Ministry of Finance, Economic development, that is Feb 22, and the implementation guidelines on agriculture from Minister of Agriculture, Volume 1, without start and end date. This will lead to duplication in planning and budgeting, thereby increasing the cost of implementation. This will further encourage the silo approach in implementing government program, which, the PD, uh, which National Development Plan 3 is posed to address committee recommendation. Government should harmonize and consolidate various guidelines that will help in the implementation of the model, taking into account monitoring and the evaluation. Number seven, inadequate funding in the financial year 2022-2023. The committee noted that with exception of pillar three on financial inclusion, other pillars of the Paris development model will continue to be funded under existing arrangements. There is no more, there's more, there's no more funding to be availed for the other pillars in the financial year 2022-2023. The second budget call circular dated 15, 15th February 2022 stated on page 10, apart from the financial inclusion, pillar that has been allocated a total of 1 billion, 1, 1.050 billion, all accounting officers of MDs in charge of the seven pillars should rationalize and budget for Paris development model activities under their respective jurisdiction as no additional resources will be allocated. The committee further noted that budget for Paris development model activities under 
uh, ministries, departments, and agencies remain unfunded priorities in the budget framework paper for financial year 2022-2023 presented to Parliament as highlighted in the table below. Committee recommendation. Government should provide sustainable funding for the rest of the pillars for successful implementation of the model since all the pillars are complementary to each other. Number nine, contradictions of uh, programs by ministries, departments, and agencies. The committee observed that pillar four on social service also proposes the construction and equip equipping of health center tools in every parish, yet Minister of Health is also phasing out health center twos and upgrading others to health center threes in sub counties where there are no health center threes under UGF program. Committee recommendation uh, the coordination function and linkages among stakeholders need to be streamlined to avoid in carrying out government programs for implementing government. Uh, implementing government programs by ministries, departments, and agencies. Number nine, emerging issues. Parish development model is not taking into consideration other emerging issues like climate change. Most households in Uganda engaged in smallholder farming activities as a means to supporting their livelihoods, highly depending on the unpredictable weather patterns. As such, farmers face harsh effect of climate change which limits their cap capacity to increase production and productivity. The impact of climate change arising from unprecedented destruction of the ecosystem, environment, and natural resources, like mass destruction, uh, mass deforestation, building in wetlands, degradation of the hills, mountains, and ra rangelands, poor waste management resulting into pollution, among others, is bound to jeopardize farming activities. If these harmful human activities, human practices on the environment are not addressed, this will affect success of the Paris Development Model implementation. Committee recommendation. Governments will streamline and integrate climate change ad adaptation interventions in PDM to enhance, I mean, to ensure the conservation of environment. Capacity building for farmers should integrate climate change adaptation and adoption of climate smart and nutrition sensitive agricultural technologies, management practices, and innovations, even as they acquire the revolving fund to improve on productivity. Number 10, lack of linkage between parish development model and other existing systems. Whereas government has de devised the PDM to ensure strategic social economic transformation, there are still other interventions aimed at uplifting citizens out of poverty, which are still active at various levels. For example, in your governments at the county level and the youth livelihood or web and operational wealth creation at sub county levels. Committee recommendation. Since the government is of the view that the PDM will deepen decentralization, all funds and other socio-economic inventions should be amalgamated and channeled through the PDM. B, there is need to structure those other ongoing parallel development interventions and integrate them into policy development model. Number 11, inadequate recovery rates of revolving funds initiated by government in the past. The committee observed that on several occasions, government provided revolving funds, such as Etandikwa, Emioga, Youth Livelihood Programs, and the Uganda Women Entrepreneur, Inter Entrepreneurship Program to alleviate poverty. Yet such funds have been construed, uh, construed by the citizens as donations from government. This has imp impeded repayment and recovery. Under the policy development model pillar on financial inclusion, government proposes to establish a policy revolving fund that will lend to policy circles. Each of the circles was settled to receive 38.1 million in financial 
2021-2022. The Paris Circle is supposed to coexist with Imyoga, which are constituents-based circles. Each of these constituent circles was allocated a ceiling start a million. Concern is raised on the fact that revolving funds set up by government have poor recovery rates. For instance, in financial year 2019-2020, the, uh, the Youth Livelihood Program has so far recovered only 37.04 million, that is 40%, out of 93.3 billion. This past, while the Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Fund only recovered 16.9 billion, that is 23%, out of 66.7 billion disbursed. Committee recommendations. A, right from inception, governments will make it clear and sensitize the citizens that the funds under revolving funds are not free donations. B, governments will come out with a clear fund recovery strategy of the funds being disbursed. Number 12, inadequate entrepreneurial capacity of the citizens. The committee observed that though there were previous government interventions to improve citizens' socioeconomic conditions, the issues of building the entrepreneurial capacity of the population adequately has been lacking. This has been identified as one of the areas for the poor performance of some of the previous interventions. The committee further observed that many enterprises identified by some of the beneficiaries under the previous interventions were not within their knowledge and the ability, leading to poor performance and in most cases collapsing, collapsing of the enterprises. This is one of the causes of poor recovery of previous funds. Committee recommendation. Government should adequately build the entrepreneurial capacity of citizens before disbursing funds so as to ensure optimal utilization of resources in pursuit of national development objectives and avoid the pitfalls of previous similar development interventions. Number 13, lack of clarity on procurement. A pro procuring and, dis uh, a procuring and disp disposing entity is required under the local government's public procurement and disposal of public ask asset, Regulations 206, to keep records and papers relevant to all procurements and disposal activities. The committee observed that there is lack of clarity on how procurement shall be undertaken under Paris Development Model, whether the community procurement principles apply or will PP PPDA guidelines be followed is not clear under the model. Without a proper procurement plan, the procurement of goods and services will be exposed to risk characterized by irregular sourcing of supplier, uh, supplies, so the works, substandard quality of goods and services, inflated costs of inputs, among others. Committee, committee recommendation. In order to achieve value for money, government should issue a proper guideline on the procurement of goods and services under the PDM. Number 14, lack of facilitation for the Paris Development Committees. The committee observed that Paris Development Committee structures in the past programs like Uganda Poverty Eradication Action Plan, PIP, PIP we are, we are disbanded due to lack of facilitation. Previous programs were only provided with functional funds, leaving out funds for facilitation, hence poor implementation of the past interventions. Committee recommendation, governments will consider providing some min minimal facilitation to the Paris Development Committee members to ensure smooth implementation of the program. Number 15, failure of the previous interventions. Since 1987, Government has implemented various interventions to reduce poverty in Uganda. These include the Rural Farmers Scheme, 1987, the Tandikwa Scheme, 1996, the Poverty Eradication Action Plan, PIP, of 1990, Kulembeka, uh, to TAP. You know, that one is not in my language, so you will understand. 
to tap. That is 201. Pro, uh, prosperity for all program, Banaba Gagawale. That is 207. Yeah, Bana. I think somebody will call it better. That is 207. And then we have Operation Wealth Creation. That is 2011. Emioga 2020 Youth Livelihood Program and the Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program. The committee observed that those interventions have not positively impacted on the long-term poverty situation in the rural and the urban communities. Poverty levels continue to be high at 39% despite the interventions. There is a need to appreciate the fact that poverty eradication is a responsibility of the poor themselves and government programs only supplement their cause. Committee recommendations. Government should develop an effective program that must approach the problem of poverty eradication from the household level, that is micro level, and not macro level, by involving the locals to contribute in decision making about what best can be done to change their conditions. B, national planners and implementers of poverty eradication programs should design poverty eradication programs that are demand driven and therefore make the poor at the forefront of the planning process through community level dialogue and the consultation. Conclusion. The implementation of the Paris Development Model should deliberately focus on uplifting the socioeconomic condition of households. This requires equity and inclusivity transparency and accountability, non-partisanship, and a national outlook. This requires capable leadership at the various levels, a competent and a responsive civil service at implementation and the beneficiary and the community involvement at the grassroots. PDM should be, in, in, PDM should be incremental, building on the success of the preceding development interventions and the learning and avoiding the pitfalls that plagued those earlier interventions. In addition, government should normalize regular evaluation. Government should employ regular evaluation of the impact of PDM to enable timely and strategic adjustments. This requires a functional design monitoring and evaluation component. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I beg to lay the first report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, you, uh, first, take your seat. You see, we have okay. to call an item. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, clerk, please get the record very well because I was listening to Chairman. There are some of the things, uh, some of the words which were difficult for him. So since he has read verbatim, just capture the whole report. Because like on page 15, the third last sentence, on 11, you mentioned that 4.04 million, when it was billion. So it, it happens uh, with some of this. But answered, want the answer to capture the full record. So since he read it verbatim, please capture the whole report. Verbatim, for anyone who will be following the answer, will find it much easier in future. Can call the next report. Motion for adoption of the report of the Committee on Public Service and Local Government on the diversion of uh, 17 million shillings for the parish development model funds in the financial year 2021-2022. Now, now, Chairman, uh, if the Prime Minister comes in, as per rule 41 of our rules of procedure, I have to stop and we go to Prime Minister's time. The are she's not yet here. The 30 minutes you asked for, you've used 28. So in the next report, please go straight on observations and recommendations. Right of Speaker, I beg to lay a report of the Committee on Public Service and Local Government on the diversion of the 17 million shillings for Paris Development Model funds in the financial year 2021-2022. Uh, Round of speaker, before I proceed to read the report, 
allow me lay a copy of the report and also the minutes of interaction with the, the various agencies I beg to lay. Right of Speaker and Honourable Members, at the sixth sitting of the first meeting of the second session of the 11th Parliament held on Tuesday, 12th July 2022, Honourable Olanya Gilbert raised on the floor of Parliament matter of national importance concerning the diversion of 17 billion, I mean 17 million of the Paris Development Model for financial year 2021-2022 for payment of salaries in Amuru district local government. The matter was further expounded by other members of parliament that some parishes in their respective districts have received less funds for the parish development budget. Similar sentiments were raised by Honorable Chebali Amoris, MP Bugabla South. Further, during the sitting of Thursday 4th, August 2022, Honorable Insamba Patrick, MP Cassandra North, raised a matter of national concern, namely that whereas the rain season had commenced, requiring farmers to be facilitated with planting materials under the PDM, funds for the purpose had not been released. On August 11, 2022, the Minister for State for Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Honorable Lugolobi Amos, presented a statement on the status of parish development model. Subsequent, to the above, the Right Honorable Speaker referred the above matters to the Committee on Public Service and Local Government for interaction with the relevant Department of Government on the matter and report back to the House. The Committee on Public Service and Local Government has examined the matter in detail, made inquiries, and in accordance to Rule 159 and 189, and now begs to present its report with observations and recommendations. Thank you, Chair. Kindly, let's stand over this item. It's 4 p.m. Okay. It's Prime Minister's time. Thank you. Right on, Prime Minister. Item number six on the other paper. Prime Minister's time. Right on, Prime Minister. Chair, remain nearby because you're going to proceed after. Right on, Speaker and colleagues. Before I go in for Prime Minister's time, allow me to join the rest of Ugandans to pay tribute to our brother, to our father, General Eric Mwine, who lost his life. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the Honorable Kahunde. Helen, woman MP Kiriandongo, gave a narrative that most of the districts and municipalities in Uganda have poorly managed, dilapidated, and overwhelmed market infrastructure, resulting in two poor working environment for market vendors, the markets are overpopulated and lacking many basic amenities like toilets, drainages, sewage systems, among others. Markets and agricultural trade improvement subject project, a high-end project was only implemented, uh, I think, in a few areas. Uh, Woman District Representative Kiriandongo at the regional level. At Honorable Speaker and colleagues, uh, she, her prayer is that what plans does government have to decentralize relatively decent market at district level? My response is that government is cognizant of the stale of the state of the markets and has taken initiative to develop them beginning with the existing markets in a phased approach. This redevelopment of the market infrastructure will ensure better working conditions for the vendors and increased revenue generation 
by local governments and promote local economic development and uh, prosperity for all. That Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the Markets and Agricultural Trade Improvement Project, MATIP, which is uh, a partnership between the Government of Uganda and African Development Bank, has redeveloped 19 markets plus three high-level value addition facilities, namely Arua, Soroti, and Ebusia. A concept proposal for 18 markets has been has already been submitted to the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for consideration. That Honorable Speaker, government is therefore committed to decentralize and redevelop decent markets in rural areas in the medium term. That Honorable Speaker and colleagues, in the next phase, government will continue expanding the portfolio to cover other areas in the country, including Kiriandongo district. Baba Zipasko, Member of Parliament of Wekula County in Murende District. He is concerned with the inability of some districts to effectively maintain their road networks due to dysfunctional road maintenance equipment and the need for the urgent intervention of the Minister of Works and Transport. His prayer is that he May I please give this uh, parliament an update on this matter? My response, right honorable speaker, is uh, that in 2017, the government of Uganda, through the Ministry of Works and Transport, procured 1,151 units of road construction equipment from Japan that were distributed to 121 district local governments around the country. Honorable colleagues, each district was equipped with one motor grade, motor grader, one wheel loader, one vibro roller, two damper trucks, and a water boozer. This was in addition to delivery of the previous consignment of 1,450 assorted road equipment units from China that were procured in 2012. Apart from the district local governments, other beneficiaries of, local, of, of road equipment procured from Japan were uh, UNRWA, Kampala Capital Store Authority, and the Ministry of Works and Transport. Other government agencies and the National Enterprise Corporation, NEC, under the Ministry of Defense and the Veterans. That Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the road equipment procured from Japan has commendably delivered in regard to keeping the district road network motorable. That Honorable Speaker and colleagues, 12 billion has been provided for equipment maintenance, inspection, and monitoring activities of utilization and usage of the road equipment around the country and is an integral component in its uh, sustenance and in an, integral, uh, an integral component in its sustenance. The Ministry of Works and Transport conducts monthly monitoring exercise called Joint Caravan Inspec Inspections. The Ministry of Works and Transport Centralized road equipment maintenance. I don't know, speaker and colleagues, in the current financial year, 2022-2023, a total sum of Uganda ceilings 55 billion has been provided for procurement of road equipment units for 16 new districts. The procurement process commenced and delivery of the road equipment is expected in May. 2023. These districts include Rwampara, Karenga, Obongi, Kwania, Kaperabion, 
karaki kitagwenda kasanda bugweri na biratuku kazo chikube madiokoro rusot terego and ruchiga ona lebovigirwa nora nyindoha bulisa district woman mp was like the uganda police force has since monday 2022 uh, has since august uh, 2022 been cracking down the defaulters of express penalty scheme tickets over 300 cars have been impound, impounded since monday the kampala metropolitan police stated the operations without giving started the operations without giving guidance to the public on how to pay the express penalty. The honorable speaker, her prayer is that can I update the house on this operation? The honorable speaker and colleagues, it is true that uh, the operation started on Monday, and since transition adverts have been running. In the, in, on media stations. The police spokesperson issued a press release on the same at Uganda Media Center before the start of the operations. By close of business on Monday, a total of 1,020 out of 1,024 impounded vehicles had been cleared. Honorable colleagues, the ticket has 25 codes for traffic offenses, whose fines vary depending on the offense committed. The penalties range from 20,000 to Uganda ceilings 200,000, which the offender has to clear within 28 days. As honorable speaker, government has a responsibility of collecting over 8 billion from the violators of express penalty scheme tickets <laughs> that traffic rules offenders have defaulted. Question number four. The Honorable Nyamutoro Fiona, National Female Youth Representative. The DRC together with the World Health Organization have announced the resurface of Ebora in some parts of Eastern Congo. Her prayer is, can the right honorable Prime Minister tell us what the government is doing so that we don't have a spillover in Uganda given the fact that Uganda hosts refugees from DRC. The honorable speaker, my response is that the government through the Ministry of Health has intensified surveillance at border points and screening at all points of entry. We are also working with authorities in DRC to monitor the contacts of victims since some are being quarantined in DRC. I don't know if speaker and colleagues, I beg to submit. Thank you, Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, you've used uh, 12 minutes, so meaning out of the 40, so meaning you've done very well. You have, <laughs> we have items under your office uh, which would need to sort out in that time. Uh, there is one member who was not gazetted by the chief whip. Let me allow the chief whip to do that since it's within your time. I don't know, Prime Minister. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Right Honorable Prime Minister for the precise and concise um, responses. Right Honorable Speaker and Honorable Member, in accordance with the provisions of Rule 1510C, Rule 158, 1O, Rule 158, 1, Roman number 1, Rule 158, 1E, Rule 162, Rule 160, Five of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, I designate Honorable Nebanda Florence Andiro, the District Human Representative Butaleja District, 
to the Committee on Public Accounts, Central Government. I beg to designate. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chief Whip. A colleague's Rule 41, Sub Rule 8B of our Rules of Procedure allows us 20 minutes for oral questions, and they start from now. Honorable Margaret Cotido. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, we are all aware that Karamoja is faced with challenges of famine. And the situation is not any better. People are still dying. To that response, there was a cabinet decision and communication that uh, 135 billion was earmarked to provide food assistance to the region. Up to date, no action has been taken, and the situation is not any better. And people are hungry and dying. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, why is government considering Femin Karamoja not an emergency? Two. No, 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 it's one question, Honorable. It's oh. one. Right, Honorable Prime Minister and the clerk, set one minute for each question. Straight and sharp. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is not true that the government is not concerned about the plight of our people in Karamoja. We have already dispersed food. We have had a number of meetings, including my sister. Government is procuring more food. The process is ending this week, and more food will be sent to Karamoja. We have Thank also you. mobilized uh, development partners to provide more food. And more food, like many tons, are going to Karamoja next Sunday. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Honorable Pio. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Prime Minister, it's now more than one and a half years since the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation was transferred to the office of the President. However, more than 150 employees who are not absorbed in the new structure have not been redeployed to other ministries, departments and agencies as had been committed. I would therefore like to know when is the redeployment going to be done and why has it delayed for this time? Right on, Prime Minister. Uh, the Minister of Public Service, where are you finding? <laughs> I saw him. And I'm confident he has the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Minister of Public Service? <laughs> we use one minute to answer this question, it's Honorable Minister. Uh, right Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, the redeployment uh, is being handled, and certainly um, all those employees are going to be re redeployed uh, in due course. Thank Committee, you. please follow up on that. Ruaga South. One minute. Oh, yeah, true. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I rise in regard to the unfairness and enforcement of the law on, proper rates, uh, on, on property rates by local governments. The annual levy on any commercial property that exists within, uh, within their ju jurisdiction under the Local Government Act 2005. Right, Honorable Speaker, the law provides for a prescribed percentage of levy for particular areas and exemptions for non-commercial structures. This has not been done the case, in the case of citizens continue to pay even where they shouldn't uh, be paying. I have received numerous complaints in my constituency about uh, residential structures which have been slapped with, uh, with this levy and the complaints from the property owners ignored. I also want to note that uh, this law excluded exemptions for the less privileged members of society. For this Honorable question, conclude. Uh, let me just complete this right, Honorable Speaker. For instance, widows, orphans, 
who own properties for major and unsustainability, not material benefit. So for all fairness, so the people should be considered during assessment and given exemptions. My prayer is right, Honorable Speaker, is that I want the Minister of Local Government to explain to this House why enforcement of the law on property rights continues to be unfair and what remedies can be introduced to avoid the unfairness. Of course, it was a question to the right Prime, Minister. Prime Minister. Thank you. The member has the Prime Minister and is still asking the Minister of Local Government. But nevertheless, she's here. I saw my sister <laughs> here. But what I want to tell you, brother, is that if there is a law in place, we shall just enforce that law. Just give us information and we do the needful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable. Right Honorable Prime Minister, there has been selective um, giving out of beds in some hospitals in some districts. Right Honorable Speaker, I mean Right Honorable Prime Minister, I would like to know the criteria they used to give out to those beds because some of the district which are doing badly in their health center falls and ha other health centers don't have beds. Children sleep on down, mothers sleep on on floor when they are giving birth. Prime Minister. So we would like to know the, the criteria they used to give out those be beds. Not only will speak as this seem to be a popular view because I've had all members as if they are all concerned. I, I request you, Right Honorable Speaker, to give me time so we can investigate and come back here with a report. Thank you. Mutembri. Thank you very much, Right uh, Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, my question is put to the Prime Minister. Uh, it's a very simple question. Who has authorized the people or the team from the Ministry of Water to go and evict my people from the swamps? Yet the President has, on several occasions, stated that uh, the people of Bukedi and Busoga should not be evicted from the swamps. On several right, occasions. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is not true that the President directed that the people of Vukedi, Busoga, should not be evicted. The fact is, Cabinet came up with a decision and we said, following the drought, following the environmental degradation, we needed to restore our environment and wetlands. Clarification. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues. Colleagues, please read the Rule 41. Only leader of opposition has the right of reply. Or, or comment on Prime Minister's time. No, just read the rules. Read the Rule 41. No information, no procedure, no nothing. Read the Rule 41. You are the ones who made the rules. Prime Minister. Right Honorable Speaker. I request members to allow me conclude. The president has been categorical that those people of those regions were lured into those swamps by some of the leaders and therefore they should be given time to harvest their crops. And I believe NEMA has seen that maybe they have harvested their crops, at least for this season. So, Thank you. And I think that's why they have swung into action. Chair Angat. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, on the 9th of this month, I raised an issue of insecurity in Todd District, where animals are stolen and are brought up to Sirongo District. Right Honorable Speaker, on the 22nd, as we talk, 12 animals have been brought back, have been taken again 
by these bandits and the, the people from our, our place are in Isrongo looking for those animals. The footsteps have been followed up to there. I would like to inquire from the minister, the prime minister, what steps have they taken since we raised this issue? Thank you, right on Thank prime you. minister. This is Honorable Charangati Bukwa. Yes. That's Sebei. The effects of uh, the raid is on Sebei. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, we shall investigate the matter and come up with an answer. Thank you. Honorable. No. Behind Dr. Musa, yes. My colleague, sorry, I've forgotten the name. In a red time. Right, Honorable Speaker, I'm called Bob Ukai, yeah. Member of Parliament for Kwania North. Uh, my for, question for is. Former Chairman. To, yeah, former Chairman. I want to ask uh, the Prime Minister uh, in my district, government opened four dams around two, 2009 to 2016. And these dams costed a lot. Each of them was at about 2.6 billion. According to the weather pattern of today, my people would be using these dams for irrigation. I want to know the plan of the government on these dams. Because since they were constructed, nothing has taken place since now. Right I mean, up to now. Right on our Prime and Minister. Yet they right on our Prime Minister. Honorable colleagues, the questions are sharp and to the point. And the Prime Minister always speaks the point. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the Minister of Agriculture is here. Brother, come and assist. Right Honorable Speaker, through my effective boss, the Prime Minister, I want to assure you that MAIF is increasing on its fleet of us moving equipment. We shall be able to come in and desilt all those dams. Allow me, right honorable speaker, to bring maybe an information to parliament next week on the dams lined up for desilting in this financial year. Thank you. Abu Bakr, Kawalia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, right honorable speaker, currently NEMA is seen as a victim people in areas of Kawala, Namungona, and Usega. Some time back, government had planned to compensate these people before the construction of Rubizi Channel. My question is, what happened to the government plan of compensating these people before evicting them? Right. As we are speaking right, right now, now Prime Minister, over 500 homes are homeless. Their houses were demolished yesterday and even today. So, right now, Prime Minister, we need your intervention. Right now, Prime Minister. Colleagues, I'm just rushing so that I can pick three more of you because our time is running out. Right now, Speaker, today we had a meeting over the same, and the Minister of Environment is here. The fact is, we want to restore the environment. Thank you. And we shall not have a fallback position. Let us be serious, colleagues. If people constructed in wetlands, they must vacate. That is it. Thank you. Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Prime Minister, thank you for your time. Right Honorable Prime Minister, I would like to inquire what is delaying the commencement of construction of Koboko Yumbe Moyo Road because the budget for this road has been availed by Bald World Bank. Thank you. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, I have taken note of the members concerned. I request that you come together, then I invite the Minister of Works and UNRWA. We go through the matter, I will give you a definite answer then. Karamoja. Thank you, Speaker. And thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I mean, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Right Honorable Prime Minister, 
10 years down the road, government extended electricity power through the Rural Electrification Agency to Moroto. And during the extension of the, li of the line, some places we are not, transformers were not put in some areas just because people had not settled there yet. But now people have settled there and they need connection to the grid. But they cannot get connected there because there are no transformers in that area. And UEDCL is actually saying that was the role of RAYA. I don't know whether government took Question. initiatives to... Question? Question is what plans does government have to put... Right on, our Prime Minister. Right on, Honourable Speaker and colleagues, the NRM government will provide power in all areas of this country, including Moroto. Kwania. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Prime Minister, Uganda is well endowed with the water bodies, and yet we cry of lack of food because of drought. What plan has government put in place to ensure that we tap water from all these lakes and rivers to irrigate the surrounding areas for them to provide food for the people, just like it's R done in Egypt and other right places. Right Honourable Prime, Prime Minister. Minister. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, this parliament approved a master irrigation plan for this country in 2020. It is that plan that we are going to use to make sure that we irrigate and all the water will go to other areas. Thank you. Fadir. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, on 13th of July, or of June, the President uh, visited us in Sebei and we raised the issue of boundary between Blambuli and Sebei. And he promised that it is the Prime Minister that will handle. So I want to ask the Prime Minister how far is the boundary issue. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues. Today, I had a meeting with the Minister of uh, Lands over the same. And the money has been uh, procured to make sure that, earmarked to make sure that that activity is done. Thank you. In a, in a month's time, that will be done. Thank you. Honorable. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker and Right Honorable Prime Minister. About six, seven months back, uh, Palisa District Open Human Representative presented here a matter about the bridges in Palisa, together with me. Right about uh, Prime Minister, nobody out of your instructions, we even gave you the documents. That's why the photos on the conditions, what happened to the bridges there. But to our surprise, nobody reached there because we left books over there. Now, as we talk right now, Question. six Question. people are in a hospital over a, a, a truck turning over from the bridge. Now, my question is, you gave the instructions. What happened? Right, Honorable. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, a member has not been categorical and specific. So I don't want to give a blanket answer. I don't know the bridges he's talking about. <laughs> Please, Honorable Rink up with the Prime Minister. Honorable Taka. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Prime Minister, my question is related to the one of Honorable Kawalia. It is true that government gave a directive to evict people from wetlands. However, it is also true that government let people to settle in those areas and established businesses. Yesterday I watched 
people crying who were being evicted from Lubiji wetland. And in their statements, they said that it was the, the people who went to evict them just woke up and went and started breaking down their stalls, making them lose. This is their livelihood. We are a government of the people. Right Honorable Prime Minister. Right Honorable Prime Minister. If Can member I you had, no, 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 please. If you had not asked a question, the Prime Minister will pick what she has picked. This is a question which needed you to write to the Prime Minister. These are not questions right for oral answer. Right Honorable Speaker, thank you for your guidance. My sister, the woman MP, Bogiri is aware. The number of people we are losing, the feminine we are undergoing, we are going through because of tampering with the ecosystem. And therefore, let the members of the community get it from me. I know they are watching. That enough is enough. Thank you. We right. shall evict people in wetlands. Thank you. Noah? Right Honorable Speaker, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda came to Nakasongola on the 30th July to inspect please the construction. Co please, colleagues, we need... To inspect Honorable the construction Taka, of... Honorable uh, Taka, we need order in the house. <laughs> please. And, and Honorable, just uh, wait a minute. Colleagues, you said it has happened today. Now, this question is, when you see the Prime Minister had 40 minutes, she used only 12 minutes, meaning you gave her a few questions. If you had, for example, liaised with the chief whip, or even my office, okay? These are questions I would have forwarded, and in one or two hours, she would have consulted with the minister responsible, and she would have answered here. Now, you want a satisfactory answer on a question she needs to go and first consult. That's... Uh, she cannot give you beyond what she knows. But it seems you want her to give you beyond what she knows. So I request you colleagues, please write questions to the PM, the rules you made that I'm implementing. Rule 41, sub rule 8A, 40 minutes for written answers. B, 20 minutes for all. That's it. I'm tied. My hands are tied by you by the rules you passed. So when I know why you're the last, and I go to lead of opposition. Right on, oh, Prime Minister, you came on 30th July to inspect the construction of the bridge connecting Nakasongola to Kayunga, which was supposed to be constructed for only 18 months, since 2019, to date. The contractor is dally dallying with the work. We don't know whether he has some invisible, invisible power Madam, right honorable Prime Minister, when will that contractor, Omega Construction Company, hand over the road to the people of Nakasonga and Kayunga for use? Right honorable Prime you. Minister. Right honorable Speaker and colleagues, Omega Construction Company was given only two months to complete the work. By the time I was in Nakasongora, he was almost 92% complete. And therefore, we expect him to hand over this work latest October 2022. Thank you. I had allowed one of your questions, so let me just conclude with her. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. On behalf of the Uganda Parliamentarians Land Management Forum, Right uh, Honorable Prime Minister, the Bamugemereide Land Commission Inquiry Report was released to the President on 29th July 2020. Up to today, the report has never been public. Can we know when the report should be available to us? Because they used public funds of up to 13 billion. And uh, we are hearing of proposals in land management. 
What are they basing on when that report is not yet available to the public? Thank you. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, the fact is I have no powers over the President. And I cannot deceive you that I know when the report will come out. But I will undertake to find out from the Head of State and come and report back. Thank you. Uh, Leader of Opposition. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I have uh, very few comments to make, and I will commence with the one of the female youth representative about uh, the outbreak of uh, Ebola in the neighboring country of uh, DRC. As a speaker, the response by the Prime Minister uh, that uh, they have uh, started the screening at all border points when the information we received and the alerts from the World Health Organization uh, that because of the uh, porous border, already the number of uh, uh, people who crossed that had uh, contracted uh, Ebola are uh, in this country. But uh, the one million dollar question the Prime Minister is about the hype over the vaccine trial of Ebola. We were reliably informed, and that is way back in 2019, I've been checking, that uh, our Uganda Virus Institute, Research Institute, had uh, developed a vaccine, and it was already on trial, even when it's not yet licensed. I expected you to at least uh, furnish this house with some information on that vaccine. Mr. Speaker, the NEMA eviction is, is uh, an ongoing and serious concern, especially here, and it has been uh, alluded to by the Honorable Member of Ruvaga North. Those communities, the people that are residing along the Ruvigi, Ruvigi channel, Mr. Speaker, sir. Those people were given a pledge to be compensated. And besides that, funds were appropriated to that effect to compensate them. Up to now, it has not happened. The pledge has not been honored. What we see are evictionists in Namungona, Kawala, and the other places that have been mentioned. Uh, right Honorable Prime Minister, the funds were appropriated and these are the taxpayers' uh, money. What happened? Justice should be dispensed uh, to these people that are living along that Rubiji channel. No, but uh, again, these evictionists, Madam uh, Prime Minister, are very selective. We know of investors and who have uh, their developments in wetlands, including petrol stations, including factories, including what we have seen in Mbale, Sino Industrial Park, flooded. They are all in wetlands. Why couldn't you start with the, the big ones before you do finish with the small ones? Big fish first. Thank you. And even many more investors are being allocated the actual land in wetlands. M Mr. Speaker, the question on uh, the National Irrigation Master, the National Master Irrigation Plant has failed because under the Prime Minister, I expected you to hint on this and uh, definitely should throw some light on it. The fund on water for production is... Uh, Rope, you're using a lot of time. This is not your time. It's Prime Minister's time. So no, you're supposed uh, to comment or reply. 
And uh, this should take around two Most three minutes. Most obliged, Mr. Speaker, but you know I'm mandated under the same rule. Yes, but to I make determine my the reply. time. No, I determine and I'm the able time. doing so. Please, one minute, conclude. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the National Master Irrigation Plan has failed. And it is taking ages. Why? Because the sister ministries, and the Prime Minister knows this, the Ministry of Maif, that is agriculture, animal industry and fisheries, and the Ministry of Water and the Environment have not harmonized their positions on who, on which ministry should implement this uh, irrigation master plan. Now, even when funds have been appropriated, they have failed. And uh, I expected the Prime Minister definitely to say this because it is under your clear that this wonderful plan is gathering dust just merely on blueprint. Isn't that also sleeping on the job? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you, uh, Leader of Opposition. Uh, since, since we are in question time, and I still had just a few minutes, allow me to also allow another item in form of a question. Colleagues, we have very many questions. You can ask a question to a member, to Pat, but you have to do it with the leave of the speaker. So allow me to allow the opposition chief whip under Rule 43, sub Rule 1 of our Rules of Procedure, to ask a question to the chairperson of the Budget Committee. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. In accordance with Rule 43 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, Mr. Speaker, I raise this question to the chairperson of the Budget Committee. The Constitution of the Republic, I'm giving a preamble, the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, 1995, and the National Objective, Roman 23, of the National Objectives and the Directive Principles of State Policy, enjoins the state to institute an effective machinery for dealing with any hazards or disasters arising out of natural calamities or any situation resulting in general displacement of people or serious disruption of their normal life. You are aware that uh, the government formulated a national policy for disaster preparedness and uh, management with the objective of ensuring that disaster preparedness and management forms an integral part of the development process in order to reduce the risks associated with natural disasters in Uganda. You recall that Uganda has witnessed a number of natural and human-induced disasters in the form of civil strife, famine, drought, earthquakes, landslides, flooding, road accidents that have culminated into loss of life, property, and displacement of Ugandan citizens. I am also aware that Section 26 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015 creates a contingencies fund and requires government to appropriate to the contingencies fund funds equivalent to 0.5% of the appropriated annual budget of the previous year to meet some of the urgent or unforeseen expenditure of the government, including expenditure arising from natural and the human induced disasters. I note with concern, Mr. Speaker, sir, that since the inception of this uh, contingencies fund way back in 2015, Parliament has been appropriating between 62 billion and 65 billion in each financial year to the contingencies fund, an amount that is far less than the statutory requirement of 0.5% of the appropriated annual budget. Now, the failure by government to appropriate to this contingencies fund the statutory requirement of 0.5% of the appropriated annual budget has affected 
government is preparedness, mitigation, resiliency, and the prevention of natural and human-induced disasters in Uganda, thereby rendering the implementation of district contingency plans highly impracticable, as well as delaying government response in addressing the needs of persons affected by natural and the human-induced disasters in Uganda. Now, considering that Uganda has and continues to witness increased exposure and vulnerability to natural and human-induced disasters, which necessitate the strengthening of disaster risk resilience through the provision of adequate resources to respond to the immediate and future exigencies caused by natural and human-induced disasters in Uganda. The question is, Mr. Speaker, can the Honorable Chairperson of the Budget Committee of Parliament explain to this August House why the Budget Committee, while exercising its mandate under Rule 173, has not recommended to Parliament to appropriate to the Contingencies Fund an amount equivalent to 0.5% of the appropriated annual budget of the previous year. For instance, this year, we would be having $244 billion as required in Section 26, um, Section 1 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015. I beg to question. Thank you. Chairperson. Thank you, Chairman Budget. Uh, please respond to this question in two weeks' time. These are, these are the kind of questions, colleagues, that will guide us in terms of, and also check us. Because if you're a chairperson, you can be asked, a commissioner, you can be asked, but once all this is provided for under the rules, and we usually give time to respond, so that the chairperson can know that members at any time can check them. Okay? Uh, so, um, Prime Minister, your statement is not yet uploaded. I wanted to use your time, and I really can't uh, call a statement which is not yet uploaded to be read. So let the chairman of local government resume. It's uploaded. Can you confirm? Members, is, uh, we have a statement on highlights from the report, a response to highlights from the report on the oversight visit by the leader of opposition and the opposition shadow cabinet to the Oregon region to assess the disaster situation. Is it uploaded? Is it on our system, colleagues? No. Please, if there is any colleague who, who has it on the system, you can stand up instead of... Honorable, it's there. Can you read it for us? What do you have? Because you say I'm disturbed with procedure, procedure. It's there? Thank you, Right Honourable. Oh, okay, very good. Colleagues have confirmed that it's there. So, uh, Right Honourable, since we are in your time, use 10 minutes to complete your business uh, for today. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, uh, I respond to the highlights from the report on the oversight visit by the lead of opposition and the opposition saddle cabinet ministers to the Aragon region to assess the disaster situation. Eternal speaker, like I told you the other time that I will come here with the response, allow me to state as follows. that during the sitting of Tuesday, 23rd August 2022, the Honorable Leader of, of Opposition presented a report on the disaster situation in the Oregon region to which I committed to respond. Below are my responses to the issues raised. One, on the alleged negligence during rescue and response. The Honorable Speaker and the colleagues, the NRM government, under the able leadership 
of Yoweri Kaguta Museveni has a track record of not being negligent. That's why the people of Uganda have entrusted us with the power for this long. The first floods and the floods give little or no time for early alert and action. At Honorable Speaker, various government entities led by myself responded to the disasters. These include uh, Ministry of Health, Emergency Response Team, Mbare Regional Emergency Operation Center, Ministry of Works and Transport through Uganda National Roads Authority, the Ministry of Water and Environment through National Water and Sewerage Corporation, the Ministry of Finance uh, through Uganda Investments Authority, Mbale City and Mbale District Disaster Management Committees, Uganda Police Force, Uganda People's Defense Forces, local leaders, Uganda Red Cross Society and the other local and international actors. Relief items from my office through the Ministry of Relief, Disaster and Preparedness and refugees were delivered and distributed in good time after a rapid needs assessment that was carried out to identify the beneficiaries. At honorable speaker, His Excellency the President provided Uganda ceilings 5 million each to the 23 families out of 29 who lost their dear ones by the Minister for President, Honorable Mire Babalanda. The six remaining families have been identified and will also be supported. The Honorable Speaker and colleagues, Uganda ceilings 1.2 million was money used to buy fuel, 2 million for hire of equipment, in addition to 14 million I used to support the bereaved families to transport the bodies. And therefore, the Honorable Speaker, it is not true that uh, Mbale City was given only 1.2 million in response. In addition, the Honorable Speaker and colleagues, allow me to thank Uganda Police, Uganda People's Defense Forces, the local leaders, and the general public for the response activities that included uh, recru uh, uh, rescuing and retrieving of bodies, provision of food and non-food items, public communication and awareness rising, rapid assessment, supporting victims, including psychosocial support, management of the dead bodies by Mbale City mortuary staff. Furthermore, right honorable speaker, Cabinet directed line ministries, including the Ministry of Health, Water and Environment, Works and Transport, Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries to provide a follow-up support, including repair of bridges, restoration of farmlands, reconstruction of schools, as well as consideration of long-term interventions. UNRWA has mobilized equipment, and now they are at Mbale City headquarters ready to work. Caravans have been mobilized to work on Usamaga Bridge on Bufumbo Road. Manda Bridge on Mutareja Road. Navisiso on Kaguta Road. Mbare Regional Mbare Bridge on Mbare Tororo Road is being worked on by the contractor who was, con who was contracted to reconstruct Malaba Tororo Mbare Sorotelira Kamudini Road. National Water and Sewerage Corporation has restored water supply in Mbare City and surrounding areas. Umeme has restored power and fixed all the poles that had got damaged by floods. On the issue of no response, to the plight of these, those affected by landslides in, Imba, in Ibududa. The Honorable Speaker and colleagues, similarly, food and non-food items were sent to victims as relief after a technical team 
had carried out assessment and identified 26 households from Mufusa Parish in the villages of uh, Bukito, Buktongo, Nangwe, Sikamosi, that were affected. In addition, eight households in Inaposi were affected by, lands, by landslide and are currently with the host families in Nangoho Town Council. Another 163 ho households across the sub counties of Shika, Bovita, Nabweta, Bosirirwa, Borucheke, Bukarasi, and Borucheke is in Ibududa, by the way, I have been here before. Bukarasi, Bundesi, Mufuma, Mubano, and Ibusiyi were also identified during the assessment to be living high risk, to be living under high risk due to the widening cr cracks and the potential landslides. My office, in collaboration with development partners, have provided as immediate response the following items. 20 tons and 10 tons of maize, flour, and beans, respectively, together with 150 taplins. The Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is not true that the, en the entire parish of Shika and Buriri village were affected. There are areas that are still safe to live in. The risk areas have since been mapped and households at risk have been registered. There is MS Give Directly, an international NGO, is partnering with government to provide the cash transfers for purchasing land in safer areas within the Mount Eregon for 4,000 households as follows. Bududa, 2,050 homesteads. Manafa, 900. Namusindwa, 500. Silonko, 550. And we are working on modalities to support the implementation to offer um, implementation of the offer from the non-government organization. The process is expected to be finalized by October 2022 when the cash transfers will commence. By the way, uh, today we had a meeting with the honorable members from Mbari sub-region or Mount Eregon sub-region and we have agreed to start tomorrow. We are starting tomorrow. We have also mobilized other donations from UNICEF, Red Cross, Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, who, um, Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, who gave us four tons of salt, 30 tons of posho, 20 tons of rice, 10 tons of beans, four tons of sugar, 2,000 bars of soap, 2,000 blankets, and 2,000 mattresses. Miracle Celebration Church, uh, through Pastor Edward Makamai, 4,000 bunches of matoke, and 300 kilograms of rice. On allocation of 1.2 million for distribution of relief food in Imbari City, once again, I, wish to I want to make it clear that 1.2 million was given to support the ras rapid, rapid response uh, assessment team. Our standard operating procedures provide that the District Disaster Management Committee manage the relief distribution. There was no way the issue of money could affect the, dist could, could if affect the distribution as the operation continued. My office has continued, in, has continued its presence, including uh, during the distribution of food and non-food items. In the same vein, it is wrong for the honorable member of the opposition 
to choose the government of negligence and betrayal. On the issue of updates and situation report in the region, as Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is on record that I have updated this House on a number of things, especially on this matter. I was here on the floor of Parliament on 2nd August 2022 to give this House on the situation report about the Ergon sub-region. On limited financing for disaster risk management for local governments. Let Honorable Speaker, the government is aware of this and is taking the necessary measures. The disaster risk management plan, which spells out roles and responsibilities, was adopted by Cabinet. Its implementation started this financial year. The strengthening of capacities and structures of districts and city management structures is one of the components. Honorable Speaker and colleagues, on the absence of disaster response coordination, I wish to reiterate my earlier assertion that the government strategies of strengthening structures of local government levels that reveal, reveal levels that uh, are embedded in the National Disaster Risk Management Plan are uh, underway. On limited capacity of disaster risk response and management. Let honorable speaker and colleagues, as already indicated in our res uh, uh, responses, the newly adopted risk management plan highlights capacity of strengthening as one of the key priorities, and these include budgetary provisions for district disaster management committees, provision of training and equipment of committee members, establishment of regional hubs, and provision of necessary equipment for disaster response, many streaming of disaster risk management in the local government budget process and the early warning systems. Negligence and delayed response by police and other forces. Let Honorable Speaker and colleagues, I hereby inform this House that police and sister security agencies were continuously present in, in response and rescue efforts. Flash floods give little, like I've already told you, or no time to predict exactly when and where they will occur. Water accumulated rapidly and the victims were trapped in the incident. The loss of lives was an unfortunate occurrence. Volunteers also joined the rescue operations. On the incapacitated early warning systems in Imbari. At Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is not true that Uganda National Meteorological Authority forecasts are in inaccurate. This authority is a member of the Interagency Technical Committee. The Intelligence uh, Technical Committee utilizes the information including dissemination of early warnings and adversaries to the public as early alerts for every actions. In addition, the Ministry of Water and Environment developed, a dissemination, developed and disseminated an early warning system for River Manafa and River Aswa catchment areas. These are running and uh, information is being analyzed by the Directorate of Water for Development. The Disaster Preparedness and Management Commission. At Honorable Speaker and colleagues, we are in the process of formulating the National Disaster Risk Management Bill. And in this bill, the establishment of the National Disaster Management Committee is one 
of the objectives. On an alleged Sino in Uganda Mbale Industrial Park, a significant contributor to the floods in Mbale. After our assessment of the floods, the following has been done. Energy has been restored. Six factories are now functional out of ten, which were devastated. In the cabinet, an interministerial committee was formed led by Uganda Investment Authority and has been to the industrial park. Assessment of the extent of damage is complete and the following recommendations are being undertaken. One, a comprehensive drainage by the Minister of Water, Works and Maif to ensure that we guard against any repeat of these floods. Money has been provided to the National Investment Authority, a contractor has been secured. That honorable speaker and the colleagues, a NEMA report will be attached. As those who were living in high risk areas, Due to landslides in Mount Ergon, construction of more houses is continuing in Mbulabutie. That honorable, colleague, that honorable colleagues, that honorable speaker and colleagues, the issue of the linking the Ministry of Relief Disaster Preparedness and Refugees from the Office of the Prime Minister will be drawn to the attention of His Excellency the President, who under Article uh, 111 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda is given the mandate to organize cabinet. For the record, H.E. the President is already aware of this matter. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, the Office of the Prime Minister, as per its mandate, will continue to coordinate and support the responses to the disaster affected areas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, both the report and the statement are referred to the Committee on Presidential Affairs, um, who will keep a watch on this issue. And indeed, I'm sure very soon they should be able to visit the areas. If necessary, we shall give them all the support needed so that they go and scrutinize. I don't want us, I don't want this to be my word against us. You know? Thank you. Uh, colleagues, on the order paper, I want us to have enough time for debate without any disturbance and without any pressure uh, for the items which we have on parish model uh, hunger and all that. So you will allow me to, excuse me, we tackle item Number nine, we get it out of the way, then we concentrate uh, on our issues. So, Clark, kind of call item, item number, number nine. number nine it's a short one. paper. Very short one. Statement by member on the state of affairs in the Democratic Party. Doctor. Ten minutes are enough. And then we go back to our colleagues. You it's much. your right under uh, Rule 54. You can you can bring uh, such. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. <laughs> right Honourable Speaker, members of Parliament who came here on a DP ticket uh, in a situation of a conundrum. <laughs> we are in a state, an unawkward state, and we have had a, a discussion with the leadership of the opposition together with the opposition whip. They have been expressing concerns 
on how to place members of parliament belonging to the Democratic Party, given the fact that their party was decapitated and their president sits on the opposite side of the opposition. So they don't know how to place us. At the moment, right honorable speaker, in that situation, the activities of our party have been closed. And any activities are regarded as rebel activities. Our party headquarters have been closed to members, including us members of parliament. It is on that basis, right honorable speaker, that one, one week ago, I, together with other members from the Democratic Party, was arrested at the gate of our party headquarters when we had gone to have discussions, political discussions, with party branches who wanted to know about the agreement made by our former party president and the president of Uganda, General Yoweri Kagutam Seven. Right Honorable Speaker, on the 16th of August, 2022, I went to the Democratic Party headquarters at Valuintuma Road in Mengo for a meeting with party leaders in Kampala District. I found the gates closed and as I was fidgeting to ensure that they are opened. Members of the media converged to me and told me that several members of the party had been arrested while they were trying to access the party headquarters. How did we come to this kind of a situation? Right Honorable Speaker, on the 20th of, 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 of July, media was awash with reports of government signing a document between the President of Uganda and the President of the Democratic Party. And this document culminated into the absorption of our party president. This caused a, a, a countrywide anxiety, and it is the cause for many members of the Democratic Party being in the gallery today, and we are delighted that you accepted to introduce them as such. But, uh, Honorable, let me guide you. Rule 54, sub rule 2 of our rules of procedure says such a statement shall be written and submitted to my office, which you did. Yes, okay? So since it is a written statement, and I, and I approve it based on what you have written, please stick to what you have written. Yes, right on Because I'm hearing a lot which I don't have on record. R right on everybody, let me read it verbatim. Please. Right Honorable Speaker, the said agreement has caused the countrywide anxiety among members of the Democratic Party, it being interpreted by the media as an extinction of the Democratic Party, uh, it being swallowed by the ruling NRM with an unprecedented absorption of its party president. Was still, Right Honorable Speaker, and most confusing is where Honorable Nobat Mao, who is the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, who took, who took oath of minister, serves in and is bound by collective responsibility of a cabinet of the government his party opposes and sits on the government side of parliament, continues to hold out as the Democratic Party president after effectively crossing to the NRM government side. It further baffles us that the, and, the, and the public, the, the agreement has affected, that ha, affects the composition of committees of parliament, including the sitting arrangement in parliament, continues to be out of reach from not only the DP members of parliament, but also the general membership of the party affected, other than the person mentioned above the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Right Honorable Speaker, the Democratic Party caucus has nine members who are members of the DP organ called the DP Parliamentary Group, comprised of over 100 members who stood on a DP ticket 
in the previous general election. The Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs claim, claims to have briefed only four members of parliament to constitute a consultative process of the Grand Old Party. We would like to state categorically clearly that we have never been part of the party process that sanctioned the negotiation or consultation to get the impugned agreement done. Right Honorable Speaker, peaceful assemblies of the organs of the party have been dispersed by Uganda police force, while scores of others were arrested on the 4th of August at all cottages in Rubaga. Right Honorable Speaker, DP National Legal Advisor acting on our request wrote to the party secretary general, Mr. Gerard Siranda, to avail the original copy of the said agreement, but no response to the request has been done 24 days now in Blanton's violation of the Access to Information Act. Right Honorable Speaker, the Democratic Party members of Parliament had a meeting, as I said, with the leader of opposition and the chief whip, and they raised the following questions, and they are very pertinent to the functioning of this house with us in situ. The first question, it's the question of Honorable Nobat Mao, the cabinet minister, holding out as party, as president of the organization or the opposition party called the DP, but sits on the opposite side of the DP members of parliament, who are under the leader of opposition and the chief opposition whip. The second question is the question of the accessibility to the said cooperation agreement, its constitutionality, and its implication to the sitting Democratic Party members of parliament. With respect to Article 83, 1H, and 83, 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, and the general membership of the Democratic Party. Question number three is whether any private member of the public domain may not sue the Attorney General in pursuit of the implementation of the agreement to the detriment of the DP members of Parliament, who may be deemed to have crossed the NRM side on which platform they were not elected to, to Parliament other than their own platform. Right Honorable Speaker, whereas some of us sit on the National Executive Committee and the National Council, which are the decision-making organs of the party, we can state unequivocally that in no, and in no uncertain terms that neither the National Executive Committee or the National Council nor the parliamentary group to which we belong has ever sanctioned the process of negotiation and cooperation agreement between DP and NRM at all. Our prayers, right honorable speaker, that the minister, Minister Nobat Mao, the Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister, lays on table the original copy of the impugned agreement to enable the Office of Leader of, of Opposition take a stand on the DP members. Two, that Parliament pronounces itself on whether DP MPs should be bound to an agreement made without their consent. In as far as voting in concert with the NRM party positions as opposed to the opposition positions is concerned. Number three, that the land attorney general clarifies the hanging position of the cooperation agreement vis-a-vis -vis the Constitution of Uganda and the Political Parties and Organizations Act. Number four, that the land attorney general clarifies the legality of the DPMP's participation in opposition activities, including their seating arrangement in Parliament. Yes, a minute. In respect to the agreement, in, in the face of a cabinet minister continuing to hold the position of president of the party, he's opposing in his current position as minister. Number five, that parliament pronounces itself on whether its commission vetted the president of the Democratic Party for the position of minister for justice and constitutional affairs or the person of Honorable Nobat Mao for the, for the same position. And finally, that we DP members, having been elected 
on the opposition platform have left, be left to enjoy our freedom of choice to perform our functions on the same platforms, whatever the interpretation of the in, impugned agreement would be. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to submit and to thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Allow colleagues. Me. This shouldn't take us long. Uh, Honorable, you finish, take, take your seat. Thank, thank you. you. This shouldn't take us long. I just want to make the following clarifications. And then we move on. Number one, on prayer number five, on who Parliament vetted, Parliament vetted the Honorable Nobat Mao. It did not vet the president of DP. And the president did not appoint the president of DP as a minister. He appointed Honorable Nobat Mao. And that's the one the parliamentary committee on appointments vetted. Number two, colleagues, I just want to put it clear that the arrangement between the two parties are not for this house. These are issues beyond this house. Parties can go have their arrangements. We hear of coalitions. Anything which is not registered with the, with the electoral commission, anything which is not registered with the electoral commission is not recognized. And that's why even in parliament here, we only recognize parties that have members here. So the party we know that has members here is DP. We don't know DP and RM. And I want to clarify that this does not affect operations of the House because the DP as a party here has its chief whip as a whip, Honorable Court Peter, member of Parliament for Tochi County, who has not reported any, let me make this clear, who has not reported any, any collaboration between DP and NRM to be recognized by this House, who has remained sitting on the side of the opposition, and Oh, and any and any gazettement of DP members are submitted to the opposition chief whip by the DP whip, not by any other member. So the opposition chief whip has not come to my office to complain. Okay? To complain that the DP Whip has failed to do his work. The moment that is done, then we can intervene because it would affect operations uh, of this house. Uh, this house, therefore, colleagues, cannot involve itself into the internal affairs of DP, of whom it has appointed, who has not been appointed. It's difficult. Otherwise, next time it will be NRM with another faction coming and reporting here, then in OOP, we shall be setting a very dangerous precedent. But I allow the member, for purposes of him recording his uh, discontent, as a member of this house, this is a forum where any member can be given opportunity. And finally, there is language that has been used uh, in this statement that we cannot allow to remain on the record of the House. For example, when you say that the Honorable Mao is holding out as the President of DP, when the Electoral Commission has not forwarded any other names, because you know we, uh, colleagues, you know we appropriate money for these political parties. And we base on the leadership of these political parties. No, any other leadership of the political party called DP has been brought to the attention of this House. The money we shall continue to appropriate, as of now we have appropriated, will go to the DP whose president is Nobat Mao. 
and it's very clear. The one we shall appropriate to NUP, it will go to National Unity Platform, whose president is Robert Chagrany. The one for NRM will go to National Resistance Movement, whose president is Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. The one for JEMA will go to JEMA Party, whose president is Asman Vasariva, and a member of this house. The one for People's Progressive Party will go to PPP, whose president is uh, Honorable Vidan Sari, and represented <laughs> by Honorable <laughs> Santa. And the one for UPC will go to Uganda People's Congress, whose president is uh, Jimmy Akena, and the wife better Monk sits on the <laughs> on the front bench of the NRM. <laughs> so, so colleagues, with that, any language uh, which is not based on clear facts, for example, saying one of Mao is holding out, please crack expand it from the record of parliament. I thank you, Honorable colleague, for exercising your right under Rule 54, but please, when we're exercising that right, under Rule 54, it limits us to the functions of the House. Uh, Honorable Dr. Rume Baiga explained and linked it. That's how I allowed, and I thank you for presenting your statement. Thank you, Krak. We go back to... Now you of NRM, what do you want with deep issues? Honorable <laughs> 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 Krak, we go uh, uh, chairperson, Committee on Local Government, please resume. You might be wanting to defect and you do it from. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe it also clarify for DP members. It's very clear. Your status in this house is very clear, is not questionable. You're members of the Democratic Party. If there are some of you who disagree with the leadership of the Democratic Party, kindly go to the DP constitution. It shows you how you can handle your issues. Other members of this house will not participate in determining how the Democratic Party is led. I hope that's very clear. Honorable, you wanted to... Yeah, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I thank my colleague, Honorable Lulume, for the personal statement he made, and I sympathize with him for the incidents that uh, happened at Balintuma the other day. Right Honorable Speaker, like you rightly said, most of the issues raised in the personal statement no, this Honorable, he didn't make a personal statement. Personal statement is under Rule 55. This is a statement by a member on any matter. Okay, thank you very much, <laughs> Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Rule on, 54. The, on the statement uh, he made, most of the issues can ably be addressed by the various organs of the party. And I urge my colleague to make good use of the organs because they do exist. And uh, the organs still exist, and uh, I call upon him to make good use of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Honorable may by God kind of always consult your whip, party whip. Honorable uh, Zima, resume. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I had already read the introductory part. Uh, I was at uh, Methodology. The committee held consultative meetings, reviewed some literature, consulted with the rele uh, consulted le relevant laws, and received submissions from the following stakeholders. Uh, Chief Administrative Officer, Amuru District Local Government. Chief Administrative Officer, Hoima Local Government. Chief Administrative Officer, 
Kamul District Local Government, uh, Chief Administrative Officer Gomba District Local Government, Chief Administrative Officer Gulu District Local Government. The committee received a written response from Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development titled Statement on the Status of Funding the Paris Development Model for Financial Year 2021-2022 and Financial Year 2022-2023. Right of the speaker, the background and the rest of the information is there. I won't repeat it. Members can go to the background and read it through. Item number three is also personalization of the PDM strategy in the financial year 2021-2022. Members can read that. Item number three is also establishment of the relevant structures at the Paris level. They can read that. Uh, item number 3.2 is supportive log logistic and equipment at the Paris level for running PDM. Members can also read this. The budget budgetary provisions for PDM for the financial year 2022, 2020, I mean 2021-2022, this one is also there, including the table. So I will request to go to page 8. That is performance and utilization of selected district local government on the Paris development model. This section of the report looks at the performance and utilization of PDM funds by selected district local government. Amur district local government. In financial year 2021-2022, Amur district local government had a budget of one, $1, $1 113 shillings. The Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development in the course of the financial year released a total sum of 530,633,919 representing 52% of which 298,000 I mean 298,000,000 29,906 shillings, representing 43% was a revolving fund. Amur District Local Government is comprised of 58 parishes, and according to the instructions to all accounting officers by PS Stock PST, each parish was to get 17.389.80 million. However, each parish got in Amur district, a, uh, each parish got 5,138,441 shillings. This was in disregard by the accounting officer to follow the instruction in the letter issued by the PS stock PST to repurpose 75,189,262 shillings for gadgets and tools towards the parish revolving fund and hence reducing the budget from 6,434,814 shillings to 5,138,441 shillings that each parish was to get on the basis that the resources were to be disbursed equally across all the parishes. Of, uh, the details of that is captured in the, in the table above. Uh, let me go to observation on Amur local government. Alleged misuse of policy development model funds to pay salaries. Number one, the committee observed that Amur district local government had a budget of 17,389,088 shillings per Paris based on the equal sharing on the, uh, on the 58 Parises and these resources were for all the four components budgeted for under Paris development model. However, it should be noted that if all the funds directed to the revolving fund plus funds for gadgets and tools were all released to Amur district local government, each Paris circle would receive 13,645,000, I mean 460 shillings, not 17 million as is being communicated. Two, the committee also observed that the accounting officer did not follow the instructions in the letter issued by the PS Stock PST to repurpose 
189,262 shillings for gadgets and tools towards the Paris revolving funds, and hence reducing the share of each Paris from 6,434,814 to 5,138,441 shillings on the basis that the resources were to be disbursed equally across all the parishes. Number three, the committee further observed that Amur district local government had a budget of 58 million 32,847 shillings for administrative cost, which was used for recruitment and partly as salaries for Paris chiefs. Number five, the accounting officer informed the committee that out of the budgeted 99,385,884 shillings for staff costs, the, he spent part of it for paying Paris chiefs. Recommendation. The committee recommends that the chief administrative officer should be audited on the usage of the funds for gadgets and tools that was not repurposed as a revolving funds. 5.2 is Hoima District Local Government. Uh, the details of Hoima, the money is sent to Hoima, are there members can read? Let me go to our observations. Alleged misuse of PDM funds for pay payment of salaries. Uh, number one, the committee observed that Hoima District Local Government had a budget of 17,389,081 shillings per Paris based on the equal sharing on the 55 Parises, and these resources were for all the four components budgeted for under Paris Development Model. However, it should be noted that if all the funds directed to the revolving fund plus funds for gadgets and the tools were all released to Hoima District Local Government, each parish circle would receive 13,077,282 shillings. Number two, the committee observed that the Hoima accounting officer followed the instructions in the letter issued by the PS, stock PST to repurpose the 62,299,424 shillings for gadgets and tools towards the Paris revolving fund, and hence the 100% performance on the resources dispersed across the Parises. Number three, the committee also observed that although Hoima district local government had paid all the 55 Paris, uh, Paris circles through their respective ba bank accounts, shillings 21 million 3,309 belonging to three Paris development model circles bounced due to errors in the account details of the three PDM circles. This was returned to the Treasury. Five, I mean four, the committee further observed that Hoima district local government did not divert any of the PDM funds for payment of salaries since they had an allocation of 55 million 131,150 shillings meant for that purpose and was released 100%. Kamuli District Local Government, the details are there, members can go through. Let me go to the observations under Kamuli. Alleged misuse of the PDM funds to pay salaries. The committee observed that Kamuli District Local Government had a budget of 17 million. Uh, 609,203 shillings per Paris based on the equal sharing on the 79 Parises. And these resources were for all the four components budgeted for under the Paris development model. However, it should be noted that if all the funds directed to the revolving funds plus funds for gadgets and tools were all released to Kamul, released to Kamul district local government, each parish circle will receive 13,818,187 shillings. It should also, it should also, I mean, it's also observed that the Kamuli accounting officer followed the instru instructions in the letter issued by the PS stock PST to repurpose 90,617,324 90, Three hundred and twenty-four shillings for gadgets and tools towards the Paris revolving fund, and hence the hundred percent performance on the resources disbursed across the Parises. 
the committee further observed that Kamul district local government did not divert any of the PDM funds for payment of salaries since they had an allocation of 55,131,150 shillings meant for that purpose and was released 100%. Gulu district local government, the details are there. Let me go to observation. Alleged misuse of parish development fund to pay salaries. The committee observed that Gulu district local government had a budget of 17,389,088 shillings per parish based on the equal sharing on the 47 parishes, and these resources were for all the four components budgeted for under parish development model. However, it should be noted that if all the funds directed to revolving fund plus funds for gadgets and tools were all released to, um, to Gulu, this is not supposed to be Amuru, it's Gulu, there's a mistake there. If all these were all released to Gulu district local government, each parish circle would receive 13,645,460 shillings. Number two, the committee also observed that the Gulu accounting officer followed the instructions in the letter issued by the PS stock PST to repurpose uh, 52 million, I mean 53 million. 237,683 ceilings for gadgets and tools towards the Paris revolving fund and hence the 100% performance on the resources dispersed across the parishes. Number three, the committee further observed that Gulu district local government did not divert any of the PDM funds for payment of salaries since they had an allocation of 129 million 923,919 shillings meant for that purpose and was released 100%. Item 6.0, disbursement settled to parishes. In addition to releases to the respective district, districts mentioned above, the committee was required to interrogate the matter raised by Honorable Nisamba Patrick, MP Cassandra North, namely that whereas the rain season had uh, commenced, requiring farmers to be facilitated to access planting materials and the related inputs through the PDM, funds for the purpose had not been released. In, his, in this, the committee was to inquire into the PDM funds disbursement schedule to establish, among others, if the releases are in tandem with the agricultural seasons. We have taken into consideration the report presented by the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to the House and referred to the committee on 11th August 2022 and noted that the report does not adequately address the matter raised by Honorable Patrick Nsamba. The Minister in his report under Way Forward 3.7 stated, I quote, that in, in future the Ministry plans to release the Paris revol revolving funds in two trenches, in July and Janu January, so that the beneficiary households can plant their crops by the start of the two major rain seasons in the most parts of the country. This response is not sufficient to answer the question of disbursement of funds to the Paris circles. The statement indicates that in the course of the financial year 2021-2022, the ministry released funds as follows. One, only 62.69 billion was released as a part of the revolving funds. Two, all the funds totaling to 10.5 10, 10 billion for administrative costs to cater for the offices and overheads were released to the local government by the end of the financial year. Three, all the funds all the funds, uh, 28.79 billion to cater for staff costs for recruitment of parish chiefs and town agents were released to local governments. For only 11.87 11 billion for gadgets and tools was released and later with instruction for PS stock PS, PST to all accounting officers was supposed to be channeled as revolving funds. Five. The minister in his report to the House states that the funds that were not released was on account of non-readiness of the local governments and policy circles. Uh, six, he further states that ceilings 1.0 billion 
was released to the Ministry of Local Government for the operationalization of the PDM Secretariat. The committee notes that in the financial year 2022-2023, ceilings 1.142.05 billion was approved as the budget for PDM, of which ceilings 1.059.4 billion is appropriated as revolving funds for all the 10,594 parishes and each to get 100 million. According to the minister, in his statement, ceilings, 100, ceilings 1, 134.83 billion has been released in quarter one, financial year 2022-2023. I beg to report that whereas the committee wrote to the Honor Minister scheduling meetings to receive clarifications on the, on the disbandment schedule and the amounts involved, the Minister did not honor our invitation. The committee recommends that the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development lays before this House the disbursement schedule for the Paris Development Funds. Item 7.0, Committee Observations. Number one, PDM strategy. The committee observes that Paris Development Model or concept is new under the National Development Plan 3 framework and it has not yet been understood by many stakeholders due to its multidisciplinary and multi-sectoral strategy. At number two, distribution of funds for the Paris Development Model Strategy for financial year 2021-2022. Chairman, you will not read verbatim, and we manage to. You need time for debate, please. You've used up okay. your time. Let me conclude. just read some few recommendations. Members There's a limited, uh, limited public awareness of, uh, okay, I allow members to debate, I leave it No, here. members have reports, so you can conclude. Okay, thank you. I know they need so time for our members, the report is there, it is uploaded, you can read the remaining, including some of our recommendations. Uh, let me go to conclusion. The committee thus concludes that... Maybe you can do 8.0 and conclusion on my... 8.0, recommendation on the PDM strategy. The committee therefore recommends as follows. Government should prioritize the implementation of all the pillars of Paris development model chronologically to enable maximum intake, understanding and utilization by all the stakeholders. In the financial year 2022-2023, the provisions and commitment of ceilings 100 million per Paris will push the Paris development model PDM strategy to another level. However, the inadequate support for pillars, especially pillar one, production, storage, agro-processing, value addition, and marketing, and community mobilization, mindset, mindset change, and cross-cutting issues gender, environment, disability, and so on. Pillar five may slow the intended progress of the strategy. Two, monitoring and supervision of government program under the Paris Development Model. Paris Development Model strategy should be intensified by relevant organ of government, including private sectors and non-government organizations at all levels in order to achieve the success of the intervention. Three, gov government as a matter of urgency implement a phased capacity building program for the policy chiefs with the focus on multi-skilling in handling complex PDM intervention. This can be through training, workshops, and seminars. In conclusion, the committee thus concludes that the alleged case of misuse of Paris development funds by the district local governments was an isolated case in Amur district, local government, where the accounting officer did not follow the instructions in the letter issued by PST to repurpose 75,189,212 for the Paris ceilings for gadgets and tools towards the Paris revolving fund, and hence reducing the share of each Paris from 6,414 4, ceilings to 5,138,000 
441 shillings. That was to be disbursed equally across all the parishes, and in his own admission, the accounting officer Amuru informed the committee that out of the budgeted 99,385,884 shillings for staff costs, he spent part of it for paying parish chiefs. Secondly, the minister's statement, for, uh, statement to the House and the written submission to the committee does not answer the question of request for releases of the disbursement schedule. The parish development model is a good model premised on the principle of uplifting households and improving livelihoods and should therefore strategically be placed for the benefit of the ordinary citizen. The success of the PDM interventions will depend on the actual understanding of the PDM concept, total commitment by implementers and effective support, proper monitoring and supervision by the respective local government. Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members, I beg to submit. Thank you. Thank you. Honourable Minister of Finance, is there any clarification you wanted first make to guide us in a debate before we go anywhere? Uh, th thank you so much, Right Honourable Speaker, and I want to thank the Chair for the statement. However, the, the statement um, is dated March 2021. So a lot has since happened. And I thought I should uh, update the House because it is very important that on record uh, I update the House on the current position about disbursement of uh, the parish development model funds, particularly the parish revolving funds for the current financial year 2022-2023. Uh, right on our speaker, we do have a total of 1.059 1, 1 trillion shillings appropriated to Ministry of Finance for the benefit of the parish circles and the entire PDM. So, uh, sorry, uh, for the parish circles. Now, we also have money that was appropriated to various agencies uh, for purposes of coordinating the parish development model. And that amounts to 9.83 billion, sorry, 82.65 billion. Now, in the first quarter, we have released 125 billion shillings for the parish uh, revolving fund, in other words, the PDM circles. That money has been released by Ministry of Finance to, to the vote of Ministry of Finance for the benefit of the parish circles. So it is now available on the vote. Now, I need to mention, right one of our speaker, that this parish revolving fund is a capitalization grant because somewhere in his report he indicated that it's a loan but it's a capitalization grant from the government to the PDM circles for the sole purpose of lending to viable income generating activities in the production, processing, marketing, and storage of agricultural products, PIDA 1. Honorable members, in the financial year 2022-23, the current financial year, the PRF the Parish Revolving Fund Disbursement Plan is as follows. This is how we are going to release the funds. A, 25 million shillings per parish has been released in quarter one, and that money is residing on our vote and means of finance. B, in quarter two, 50 million shillings is planned for disbursement. So the quarter running from October uh, to December, uh, parish circles will receive 50 million shillings. In the third quarter, running from January to March, they'll receive 25 million shillings. That's what we shall disperse. Members, you need to note that disbursements shall only be made
to properly established and ready PDM circles. And I think that is very important, right honorable speaker. They have to be, the circles have to be ready to receive that money. Um, PDM circle readiness implies compliance in the following areas. A, the PDSM, PDM circle corresponds to a parish on the list of gazetted parishes to guard against sending money to ineligible circles that could be formed by schemers targeting PDM money. B, the PDM circle is duly registered under the Cooperative Societies Act and has been issued with a certificate of registration by the registrar. C, the PDM circle has an account in a supervised financial institution, a bank such as Post Bank, uh, ETC. D, the PDM circle has signed the PRF financing agreement with the chief administrative officer, Stroke Town Clerk. We have availed these financing agreements, they are simple agreements. The purpose of this agreement is to formalize the relationship between the government and the PDM circles. E, local government accounting officer has submitted an attestation form to confirm that the PDM circles were formed in accordance with the PIRA 3 guidelines. And the F, PDM circle has been verified by the Chief Administrative Officer, Stroke Town Club, supported by Operation Wealth Creation against data on subsistence households in the PDMYS. PDMYS is a parish development management information system which we have developed to manage the 10,594 circles and their operations. My ministry therefore urges all local government accounting officers to fast track the prior activities necessary to ready the PDM circles for disbursement, specifically to complete data collection on all households and finalize the establishment of PDM circles in all the parishes under their respective areas of jurisdiction. Uh, right on our speaker, I mentioned last time that we have 8,333 circles that have been formed. So we have, I think, close to 2,700 circles, and uh, slightly beyond, that are yet to be uh, formed and established on the system. So we are urging the accounting officer to make sure that they verify and they finalize the process of creating all the parish circles within their areas of jurisdiction. Right when I was speaker, in July 2022, my ministry requested the local government accounting officers to work with Operation Wealth Creation to validate the PDM circles formed. And that exercise has been going on and to verify the membership in the PDM enterprise groups and the circles for prior disbursement of funds. This exercise, which is aimed at ensuring that the PDM target beneficiaries participate in the PDM enterprise group circles. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to conclude by saying that for effective management of PRF funds by PDM circles and learning from past experience, the target beneficiaries should not access the disbursed PRF fund before they are prepared. Initial access to funds shall be preceded by training and preparation of PDM enterprise groups and PDM circles on governance, loan management, record keeping, good agriculture and agribusiness practices. Furthermore, the parish development management information system has been designed with the capability to track daily transactions in the PDM circles. If the system is effectively used, the tool will provide full accountability and traceability for PRF funds. So the system is already working uh, towards whatever I've mentioned here, and the money is already available on the system awaiting disbursement to the successful, uh, successfully established circles. I beg to clarify. Thank you, Honorable Minister. 
Honorable Minister, you've seen you had prepared a response now and it has very useful information. So I request you sign it and then you lay it on the table so that we can upload it on a system for all members to access. It has very important information. It will guide us as we go to the constituencies. You can read it. Uh, right on our speaker, I beg to lay on the table uh, my statement on the readiness to disperse parish revolving funds under the parish <coughs> development model in the financial year 2022-2023. I beg to lay. Thank you. Uh, I hope it is signed. Okay. Crack, approach it quickly. I want by the time in around 10 minutes, members should access it so that we are able to, 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 uh, to refer to it. Now, uh, colleagues, if you remember, and that's why I was calling chairman here, I remember the minister uh, table laid on table the schedules, and I referred them to the committee to go and update the report. Uh, you scrutinize, you update. So those documents, we, they need to be put in the library so that members can access. Number two, Honorable Minister, a quick one before I open up the debate for which I need a clear answer. I remember as we were finishing the financial year, a promise was made that the 17 million which returned to the consolidated fund, which we were supposed, which we had appropriated for us financial year, and was supposed to be released and was not released, we were promised that for this financial year, we shall release 117 million. Now, from the releases that are projected for the different quarters, I can see you're going to release 100 million. I know we didn't appropriate the 17 million, which would require supplementary. And uh, you had promised, uh, the Prime Minister had promised that indeed this would be done. Can we know the fate of the 17 million? If it's available uh, and uh, you're not ready to use it here, why don't you use it for seedlings and shortcomings we are having in the agricultural interventions, seeds and seedlings? <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker, it is our commitment to pay the 17 million shillings per parish. Indeed, last financial year, for the first two quarters, we made releases. We had to continue in the third and the fourth quarter, but we didn't because we had realized that the circles were not getting ready to receive that money. However, towards the end of the financial year, some circles had been created. And indeed, the cows went ahead to release part of that money. A number of them returned the money on the consolidated fund. However, because we did not know what quantum of money would be required at the end of the financial year as a balance, we did not know how much money to present to the House for appropriation. Therefore, we have a duty to come back to the House to appropriate that money to, uh, to, these, uh, to these, now to the circles. We are not going to send the money to the districts again, but to the circles and we are, we are now ascertaining the balances pertaining to each of the circles in the various districts. We already have a schedule which we are ver uh, verifying, so that's how we intend to move. And therefore, as soon as we are ready, we are making arrangements uh, to transmit that money to the respective parishes. But we thought that we should not delay the parishes and uh, parish circles any further that this money that has been properly appropriated can be made available. Sure, sure. And any circle that is now ready should receive its funds. So sure. that's how we are proceeding, right on our speaker. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so uh, now, colleagues, I open up. Wow. I'm going to try my level best to ensure that each one of you wants to speak, speaks on this matter. But colleagues, if you check on the order paper, 
we are not only handling this matter. We are handling three matters in our debate. Two of them require a vote. Uh, one does not require a vote. Uh, we have, uh, because we said they are closely related, you can be seated, so that I guide you. Uh, we have a statement to Parliament on actions taken to improve food security and mitigate the impacts of the long, long dry spares, as well as the performance of the tractor scheme. So I will allow uh, any issue related to that. Now, why we said this parish development model has been mooted as if it's the one which is going to solve all problems, and that's where the money went. So we are going to be repeating ourselves, uh, discussing one statement, uh, leaving out the other. So let's relate it, and we see how best we can have a convergence of ideas. The other one, of course, uh, the two statements presented by the minister, diversion of the 17 million shillings for the parish development model, where uh, these districts have been cleared, but the audit agenda, of course, will go on and carry their audit. Ours was just oversight. Um, and uh, number three, the status of the implementation of the parish development model. So uh, let me start with here, then I come here. And colleagues, I'm going to allow you, don't mind. Uh, Dr. Wanka, I will first speak those ones who haven't spoken yes. today. Yes. So I will start. Mama Siro Gwar, Dr. Wanka, all of you, I'm picking you. So don't mind. Uh, you, mm, you have already spoken, at least I will first pick those who haven't spoken. But I will pick you later, after exhausting colleagues who haven't spoken today. Uh, two minutes each. And Clark set the clock. And members of the committee, please, if you say member of the committee, kindly alert me. Members of the committee, you cannot debate your point. So Honorable Adrico, Martin Muzari, and group, you're out. <laughs> yes. A shadow Thank minister will give her time to respond. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I appreciate the statement given by the minister on this important uh, matter of Paris development model. However, Right Honorable Speaker, I have a lot of difficulties having interacted with my district team so many times on this subject. I still encounter lack of preparedness on the part of the team on the ground. We have received so many statements and we have had discussions around Paris development model. Even we as members of parliament cannot answer some, most, some of the questions. And those people on the ground are less exposed than us. So I think one of the things that we have to do as a house uh, uh, is to try and come up with a um, mechanism of sensitizing the people on the ground, people who are going to manage the fund. Secondly, right, Honorable Speaker, is how are we going to demarcate the money for the women and the money for the youth? Because this is also causing us problem. We know the money has been sent for Paris development, we want to know how much is for women, how much is for youth. And secondly, who will determine which women group will benefit and the others wait? So these are some of the gray areas that uh, the ministry of the two ministries of local government and finance should help us uh, to understand so that we can guide our members accordingly. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, Minister, you tabled the guidelines. In the rejection. I think it was Minister for local government. Chairman, you can help if they were tabled. Uh, I'm informed that they were, the guidelines were tabled. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, uh, right, Honorable Speaker, if you allow me one second, there's something I forgot to mention that previously we had indicated that the parish chief would be a signatory on the circle account. Uh, that position has since changed. The cabinet sitting, the cabinet meeting held last Monday changed that position and decided that the circles should be able to appoint the people who will be signatories uh, to that account. And uh, on issues of gender, if a circle receives 100 million shillings, for example, 
we have already indicated that 30% of that money should be loaned to women and 30% to youth. Uh, so the ratios have been divided as such. The, aid, the people with disabilities, I think, have 10. Yes, and so on. And then there's other that get 20%. Thank you. But, but Honorable Minister, you see the issue of the parish chief, we wanted a government official we can hold accountable at parish level. Now, the other ones are not anyway. If it's a cabinet decision, thanks for updating us, but the committee can scrutinize. But Minister for local government, I request to get us copies of regulations and uh, any guidelines, copies for all members. For copies for all members. Although we had given at the induction time, very many things have changed. Yeah. For example, the way my colleague is talking, yeah. I pledged to go and organize copies for all the members, hard and soft copy. Updated copies, yeah. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Yes, Dr. Wanika. Uh, thank N you. Now, let's have questions, then the minister comes in, he answers. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the parish development model, the core objective was to transform the subsistence farmers into the money economy, who are 39%. When government comes, they seem to tell us that the entire 100% households, they are involved in the parish development model which is defective. The Polish model targets 39%. When the minister came here, the minister of finance, he told us that one of the characteristics of the subsistence farmers, they are landless. If these people are landless and they are 39%, how do we render the cash crops, including tea, coffee, and the likes into their hands? Government is seeming to run away from these very important cash crops and rendering them in a program that leaves them out and targets only the 39%. I want to ask the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Agriculture, what is going to happen to the 61% Ugandans who are now outside the program of PDM? We don't have seedlings. Right now, farmers are calling us for seedlings and for seeds. And the government has said they are not going to provide. Where are other Ugandans going to run? And then, right, Honorable. Kraka, did you say two minutes? Right. OK. Uh, OK, you can ask. Your, your Thank you. I've asked as a shadow minister so that I comment on the food. Who is the shadow minister? For agriculture. She okay. is, I think, for, for local government. For me, for agriculture. You're not sure about your minister? You're saying you think? Uh, no, no loop, she is. Loop, you she don't is, know your cabinet? She is for the local, <laughs> for oh. the local government. Uh, right, Honorable. <laughs> right, Honorable. I want to make a comment on uh, the food security. Yeah. In this country, we produce lots of foods, grains and cereals. But we lack a national food storage system. And that is our huge problem. We don't have the silo systems. Our farmers at the end of a huge production, they end up losing because they cannot store their food. And then we find in one area like Kalamoja, people are lacking food. I want to hear from the Minister of Agriculture. When are we investing? in the national silo system so that we can secure foods for the future and also help the farmers not lose in post-harvest issues. And lastly, honor the extension workers. The PDM has recruited parish chiefs who are not subject matters, specialists in regards to agriculture. And the main activity in PDM is agriculture. Why did the government think that the, these administrators are the priority instead of the extension workers? What are we going to do? 
Thank you, you Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, the parish development model targeted household incomes, but now the 39 percent that they are talking about, even its categorization is problematic because the sub counties that I have, we have families that have applied. They went to the parish chiefs and now they are being told that uh, uh, you people belong out of the 39 percent. So we want to know from the minister how did they arrive to the 39 percent or the beneficiaries of the parish development fund? Because basically in most of our communities people are poor. The parish chiefs are telling them that you people do not belong in the category that has to benefit from the Thank parish you. development model. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I want to put it clear to the minister that they went ahead to recruit uh, parish chiefs. But Honorable Minister, it is a tug of war to find parish chiefs in their respective parishes because in your assumption is that the parishes have offices and these offices are not there and therefore these circles where will they get consultation from since the, the parishes don't have uh, offices there uh, another issue uh, honorable minister is uh, in your assumption that all parishes will get equal uh, uh, will get equal share 100 million but I want to put it clear that some parishes are too huge compared to other parishes. For example, in my parish, I have a parish which has less than 1,000 uh, people. And I have a parish like this which has over 5,000 people in a parish. Now, how will this be equitably distributed since parishes are not equal? Lastly, uh, Honorable Minister, is, uh, you, you tend to hinge on agriculture. And we want to agree that even a parish where we are standing here, where the parliament is, there is a parish. And there are, there are also people, poor people around here, including NASA here. How are you bringing them on board? Those who are not in agriculture, but they are in urban areas, but they, 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 they don't include, they don't do agriculture. Thank you, right when I will speak. Thank you, Mark India Saba Gabo. Then I come here, then after I come back here. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. We remember very well the challenges that we found out when we were, when we were sent out to monitor Emioga. And we know Emioga was a mirror reflecting the parish model. But one of the challenges we found is that people who are managing Emioga were not well paid. So I propose that we need qualified people and they have to be facilitated so that we can monitor this huge amount of money. Secondly, um, some parishes have many people. For example, Masaja Division in Machinde Sabagabo, it has around 150,000 people. So if you say that uh, each parish is going to get 100 million, to me it's not fair. We should revise that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Itungo Namisi Indwa Chemutai Kwizera. And then James. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my issue is with the local government. And that's what is in my constituency. The matter of recruitment of uh, parish chiefs. Mr. Speaker, the ideal situation would have been that the parish chiefs should be recruited from the parishes or in the sub-county at worst at the, from the district. But I have parish chiefs who are recruited from outside districts. And these parish chiefs, they come on Monday and stay in hotels, then they go back. So they are not on the ground. In the long run, these parish chiefs are going to be very expensive to, to maintain. So. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, you do some homework and see how this situation can be uh, put into order. 
Then number two, I have a, a sub-county called Buhezu, uh, Buchiro. People are, people are charging the money for registration. They are charging 2,000 for registration. And those who did not have money, who are the 39%, were not recruited. So they are saying their money should be refunded. And of course, that was not good. Then finally, uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, there is a policy, uh, a policy framework which is on record here, where the minister was saying that he consulted the parliament as far as the parish development board is concerned. And from my, since last parliament, I have not had any issue to do with the parish development model consulting members of parliament. I don't know if there is a member who has consulted, or right on the speaker, if you are consulted on this matter. And I think because parliament was not consulted, that's why we have these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the chairperson of the other committee observes lack of coordination between the PDM Secretariat, the sub-counties, and the district. Right Honorable Speaker, PDM is going to be operated at the local level. And if there is no coordination between the Secretariat we end up having challenges. Right Honorable Speaker, I don't see any policy put in place which determines who does what while PDM is being implemented. There is going to be conflicting in not understanding who is handling what. And also, Right Honorable Speaker, the sanctions being put in place on those who fail to repay this money back. How do we recover this money? And in what time frame do we give? So that we don't lose these funds like we have lost other funds. I thank, thank you. you. Honorable Chairman Tai. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to thank the Minister for the presentation and the committee uh, about the Paris Development Model. Uh, my concern is about uh, pillar number five. That is on mindset change. We were told that these people are being trained on mindset change. I, I don't know whether there is a standard training manual for these farmers. I think I need an answer from the minister to tell us whether there is a standard manual for training these farmers because we need to have copies. We need to, to know what these farmers are being taught so that when we go there, because we can also train, uh, we need to have the copies with us. I, uh, my suggestion is that in, that, uh, in the manual, we need to, have, to include uh, crops, the enterprises, the enterprises that have been selected. The information must be very clear to the farmers on how they should go about with those selected enterprises. Thank you. Thank you, Quizera. Speaker, thank you very much, and honorable colleagues. Colleagues, I want to thank the, the committee of public service and the local government for the work they have done. But uh, that report needs to be responded to by government because it is a very good report and it has raised the fundamental issues. <coughs> Secondly, there is a conflict already between the Minister of Finance, the local government, and the Minister of Agriculture because parish payment model, in my place, talking about it is uh, very, very dangerous because it is unpredictable. And the uh, punishment model is undermining NADs because now they are saying the money that was supposed to be for seeds is supposed to be for punishment model. So it is becoming very dangerous. Secondly, uh, the scope, we need to amend the local government act to receive the money. And unless you amend the local government act to receive the money from central government, there is a very big challenge on the sanctions who does what, and accountability. Because accountability function is by law. But now if you say that the money will go directly from finance or local government and it goes to the circles, that's the going to raise a very, very big challenge, uh, right on level speaker. So I would suggest that the, if we want to relate the punishment model to food security, the Minister of Local Government should come and with a statement to relate them. Is he, is he satisfied that 100, 100 million 
is going to answer all the issues of the food security. Otherwise, talking about rebuilding tomorrow in some constituencies, you will get a lot of questions which you cannot answer. Yet the questions must be answered here either by policy or by law. You cannot have guidelines or uh, regulations which, where you don't have the law. Regulations come from the law, yet there is no law. So let us have parish government model. Okay, uh, James, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mine, I'll begin with the chairperson's report, the committee's report. You were talking about the qualification of a parish chief to move from either diploma to degree. I vehemently disagree with you because these fellows are going to work in the rural areas. We have had some county chiefs who are graduates, but is there any change? So let's maintain them and train them regularly. Two, uh, Mr. Chairman, you talked about 453 billion in the whole model, maybe a given financial, of which 404 was for disbursement. And there is the element of saying that they must provide services like roads and the other. Is the 404 billion going to be part of the money that this parish will use to make a better road and a bridge? We need that clarification from the chairman, uh, chairman and minister of finance. Then the other matter, regarding the parish chief, Mr. Minister, sir, who had convinced these people that the parish chief must be the, the signatory, simply because we can do sanctions. But here, you are giving those villagers a bonanza to choose somebody to be a signatory to the account, and he, I think he, there is no way we shall follow up. It's better we go to the original that the parish chief should be the signatory. Otherwise, if politically you have been convinced that they select, I think we are going to recite the disaster. I thank you. Katariwa. Thank you so much, late honorable speaker. Late honorable speaker, my concern I have with this parish development model is to do with the guidelines which are changing on a daily basis. As you notice, even this afternoon, the minister has brought another change to the guidelines regarding the signatories. Sometime back, we were in the communities sensitizing people about how this parish development board is going to work. Is the ministry going to organize other sensitization meetings in communities to tell people about these changing guidelines? Even the minister of local government has also already brought other changes at the moment. So what are we really going to do with this parish board development model? Right Honorable Speaker, in my view, this parish development model is still a pilot. But we are doing a pilot and we are making every resource of this country going to a pilot. Right Honorable Speaker, I would urge this August House to really again reconsider this parish development model, really scrutinize it again. Otherwise, we are heading maybe to bury our economy. I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Is that honorable at the back? You know, colleagues, I'm going to pick you. What I'm doing, Thank I'm you so it. much, right, Honorable Speaker. Uh, otherwise, uh, wait, Honorable. You see, colleagues, you have a problem. People from one region, you sit together. Now, I'm going to read people from one region. It will look totally different. So what I try to do, I mix up. I try to mix up. Now I will reach there. Otherwise, someone will see and say, eh. Tayevga is, uh, yeah, is planning to do something in West Nile, or he's favoring his Westerners, or he has a deal with Uganda. So that's why I keep jumping and coming back. So I want to implore you. Here the language we use is English. Colleagues from the same region, stop sitting together. <laughs> Interact with others from other areas and you. <laughs> yes, Honorable. The lady... In, the, the one in the middle. Thank you so much, right, Honorable Speaker. That, that's Brenda yeah. Namkute. Yes. Oh, sorry, I wasn't thinking you were. And, and colleagues, look, maybe if you want to tell me that you want to talk and go, we are still here, so don't put me on pressure to pick you first. Yes, we are still here. If you know you want to speak and you rush out, don't ask questions and then you don't even wait for answers. Be attentive. Please, all of us are going to speak. Brenda? Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. 
I would like to thank the committee for the presentation and the Honourable Minister. However, there is a big gap in the sensitization program. Right, Honourable Speaker, you'll bear me witness that there are even some Honourable Members here in the House who are still singing parish model, but the whole concept is not understood. I am being honest. Let us not lie to the public with these changing guidelines on a daily basis. Right, Honourable Speaker, my main concern is on sensitization because from the top leadership, ask the Honourable Members of Parliament, when you, when you also go down to the district councillors and the all local leaders, you find that the whole concept is messed up. Yet all funds were referred to parish model. Every time we speak here, we refer to parish model. All programs have been referred to parish model. Now we are getting a huge, a big gap between the implementation and what we say. It's really huge. And I, uh, I request the Honourable Minister and I request Cabinet to review the sensitization program because most of the programs come as a rumor and they end up being messed up. It's a big problem. Then the other uh, concern is about the how will you cater for the different percentages. Initially, you talked of percentage, women percentage. Up next on UBC, brought to you by... Keep the lights on. Use Airtel money to pay for all your Yaka bills conveniently.